Happy Tuesdays, SOBs, or should I say happy FACO Tuesdays. Hi, I'm Jared Logan. You have tuned in to the Stream of Blood, a tabletop role-playing channel where we play all kinds of live plays of tabletop role-playing games. Tonight, it is Thacko Tuesdays, which means we are playing Old School Essentials. Uh, this is what's called an Old School Renaissance game. What does that mean? It means they took the rules from the 1981 edition of Dungeons and Dragons and they just they made them nicer to look at they made them make a little more sense they took out some of the mistakes and they put all the monsters and all of the rules that you need right in this one little book that fits in the back of your pocket if you wear very large pants um, did I mention my name's Jared Logan? Uh, we're so happy that you've joined us here on the stream of blood. We've got a lot of stuff going on uh, all week. Uh, Thursday, be sure to tune into the Stereo app for our Campaign Promises chat show where uh, myself and Mr. Clinton Trucks just nerd out for about an hour and a half about various role-playing games. Saturday, we have more Blades in the Dark coming at you. Sunday, more Vampires of Pittsburgh. But tonight, uh, we are going to continue making our way through uh, uh, one of the classics of uh, dungeon crawling. This is uh, module B2, the keep on the borderlands. Of course, we have adapted it to our special setting. It is now called the fort on the far seas because we are on the Isle of the Sword in the far seas. And, uh, you know, old school role playing, it's very different from your modern day Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, these characters start out at level one, sometimes with one hit point. Uh, I think I killed three characters in one session about two or three sessions ago. But last time there was no character death at all. And what made the difference? It was the reaction roll, you guys. Every time you meet a monster or an NPC, I roll these dice and I see if they attack you, are indifferent to you, or if I roll a 12 or higher, they like you. And last time our heroes kept running into people and monsters and animals that just thought they were swell and wanted to be pals with them. That's the kind of weird, swingy rules you get uh, here on the Thacko Tuesdays. So let's get into it and let's enjoy it. We've got a great cast for you tonight. Uh, first, I'll bring in uh, my good buddy. Uh, this guy is uh, the wind beneath my wings here on the Stream of Blood. Um, he is he is uh, a, my rock. Let's, let's say that. He's my rock. Uh, and he rocks. Um, uh, he is going to be uh, reprising his role as the Dwarf Boople Von Borplesby. Please welcome Mr. Clinton Trucks. It's me, Clint. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Good. How you doing, man? Uh, good. Uh, was my Did my intro seem sweaty and anxious and like I was really forcing it? You leaned on rocks a little too hard. You um, are my but, rock, though, pal. You are. But then you, also, I... I I, I think you compared me to the rock and then you suggested that I rock actively. It was rock was doing a lot of work. I did. I compare you to the rock. I have to assume you did. Your, your, your top lip got sweaty the way it does when you think about him. Um, how, how do you feel about the rock? I'm, I'm pro Dwayne, the rock Johnson. I mean, he feels like a cardboard human in the way all mega stars do, but I, I find him inoffensive and mostly charming. I think he's pretty charming. I, I want to watch that movie where he can, where it's Rampage and he has a giant gorilla. He do acts opposite watch, a giant CGI gorilla. Do you want to watch his new sitcom, Young Rock, where it's like Young Sheldon, but it's young versions of The Rock? Only when they do a Young Sheldon crossover. I, I, I think that is a possibility. <laughs> I think it is, too. Um, let me ask you this. What class what old school class in in 1981 D, &D would the rock be as a human fighter, fighter. fighter for sure fighter yeah you're right because he's strong um let's bring in uh, simple pleasures right there's, there's nothing to complicated about the rock no no he's uh he's uh meat and potatoes man um speaking of uh meat and potatoes man i'm gonna bring in a yogurt man right now he is <laughs> a fantastic actor writer uh creator of all kinds of really strange stuff that i really enjoy uh and he joined us last time and uh he was just so much fun to play with please welcome my good D, &D buddy playing doink the elf mr nate fernald everybody hello 
What's up, dude? Not much. I'm ready to kill a horse again. Yeah. <laughs> you killed one horse last time. It was sort of in your backstory, but it's still, it's, it's, it's canon. It's canon. You killed a horse. Also, um, very happy how many people in the comments are shouting out, <laughs> The Matrix! <laughs> right, so we got this thing going. Um, if you didn't see last time, we were talking about how one time Nate was filming a commercial in New York City, and some people walking by saw that he was filming, and the guys walking by just yelled out, The Matrix! So <laughs> now when we do something fun or cool in the stream, especially if Doink or Nate does something fun or cool in the stream, be sure to throw out The Matrix uh, so we know y'all are there. Uh, well, Nate, yeah, we should let Nate know people have been shouting the Matrix in every game since last Tuesday. That's true. <laughs> the Vampire game, Blades in the Dark, all of our games now, people are shouting the Matrix, and I couldn't be happier That's about it. That's incredible. <laughs> Nate, you're a big uh, music fan, so I wondered if you had anything you wanted to recommend. Nate has Nate owns hundreds and hundreds of physical copies of CDs, oh, wow. and he keeps up with stuff that's kind of fun right now. There they are. Look at that. Big, beautiful wall of stuff. Handsome. Maybe you could recommend um, something for people's Dungeons & Dragons kind of soundtrack or something like that. Oh, man. I mean, Dungeons & Dragons soundtrack classic. You got to go with uh, Luca Turilli. Yeah. Um, what was the name? I think it's King of the Nordic Twilight. Yes. Um, <laughs> we used to listen to that all the time when we played. Yeah, King of the Nordic Twilight by Luca Turilli. Uh, it's a genre of music known as fantasy metal. It's like very intricate heavy metal, but all of the lyrics are about, you know, dragons and dwarves and elves and things like that. And the albums are like concept albums where they like tell a whole fantasy saga from start to finish. And it. it's just a lot of fun. And in all their like promo photos, the the musicians are like holding swords and wearing capes and stuff. It's, yeah. It's a good time. Is this, is this an Italian metal band? What? They, I can't remember if they're like Italian or Norwegian, but they're definitely. Um, they're elves. I think they're elvish, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Let's see. Let me do a. a <laughs> while, 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 while Nate does a Google search, I'm going to bring on our third and final player. Uh, we're so excited to have this guy playing with us for the first time. Um, and uh, it's, it might have been a while since he's last played Dungeons and Dragons, but uh, he's a hysterical comedian. You should check out his podcast, Bananas. Please welcome Kurt Braunohler, everybody. What's up? Hey, buddy. How's it going? I'm very excited to play. I would like to also point out that I I thought I had played before, but then when I looked at my, my sheet, I was like, oh, yeah, I don't think I ever got to playing. I think I bought a Dungeon Master's Guide <laughs> and never actually played. Right. I'm just like, oh, there's a lot of stuff in here I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> That's what a lot of us did. I think I kept, I told Clint one time, like my first um, Dungeons and Dragons book I owned was this box, but it was X-Men Dungeons and Dragons. So it was like, it just had like Storm and Wolverine and all these people on it. And I was like, a box of X-Men. I didn't know what it was. And then <laughs> it just had all these books in it. And I was like, what are these? And then I opened them up and they all had all these little numbers at like Storm has a strength of 12 or whatever. And I was like, I, do, I don't know what this is, you know? Uh, and I never played it. And there were many games that I bought that I just kind of never played until I figured out years later what Dungeons and Dragons is. So you've never played before at all. You've never rolled a 20-sided die. That is correct. But I used to live in Baltimore, Maryland, and there was a house two or three houses down from my house that had, it was, you know, a row house with just like a perfectly square little place where no, most people had grass. But this person had put all white rocks and then thousands, maybe hundreds, definitely, of 20 sided dye mixed in with the white rocks. And so I would walk past. That's that. amazing. It was amazing. And it looked when the sun would hit it because it like the white rocks were kind of sparkly and would like light up through the, the dye, the dice. Uh, it was it was really amazing. So, you know, I'm pretty familiar yeah, so you're familiar with the time. dice, but Kurt, that was Gary Gygax. <laughs> <laughs> that was Gary Gygax's house. He wrote he wrote the adventure we're playing today. Also, I have I have a recommendation for music to listen to. Oh, great! Phantomas, Nate, are you familiar? Oh, yeah, with I am. Yes. 
This, I think, is all horror movie soundtracks as played by an Italian metal band. Let's jump into it a little bit. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, there it comes. That's a hot lick. <laughs> into it. Um, well, Phantomas. Now, Clint, do you know what the uh, Phantomas is a reference to? Uh, well, uh, it means uh, more Phantos, please. <laughs> that's a great guess i think phantomas was like a dime novel about like a guy who wore a mask and he was like a, a, a the batman of 1916 or 1920 whenever they published those dime novels he was, a pimpernel. He was a bit of a pimpernel that's right um well i mean look we love italian metal uh and we love uh did you find out what, what luca Turilli are uh Nate? he's uh, italian he's an italian man Look at this, two Italians for the for, for D and D. And now it makes sense why when you first hit play, it just sounded like the Godfather soundtrack for a yeah. second. <laughs> um, guys, are we ready to play some Dungeons and Dragons? Let's do it. Okay, yeah. from here on out, only acting character. I'm joking, you don't have to do that. Okay. Um, let's play some old school Dungeons and Dragons. Let's play uh the Fort on the Far Seas. So uh your characters are in the fort on the far seas. It is a small colony hanging onto the side of a hill far out in the far seas, uh, out far away from the civilized world, from the civilized inhabited continents. You have come to this place to find your fortune. The old world is no good for you anymore. Perhaps you were a, a criminal there, branded as a thief. Maybe you just you wanted to come out here and seek your fortune because you've heard. You've heard that there are ancient treasures here on the Isle of the Sword, where there are many caves and grottos where they say the original tribes of the civilized men and women uh, are dwell. The, the Duna Day, the original tribes that have eventually settled your civilized lands that you've come from are here. Uh, and uh, let me just talk briefly to Clinton and Nate about their characters. Last time you guys were branded as criminals by the Fort Marshal, yeah. you were sent out to do a job, which Lizard is guards. to slay the lizard man in the uh, slay the lizard men in the swamp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were sent out with guards from the fort. You slew all of those guards. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but as you'll recall, they started it. They did start it. So now you're back at the fort. You've, you've got a pretty hefty purse full of coin because you stole from the dead bodies of the guards who you decided to betray. And you also uh, you also went into the caves of chaos to the east and you, um, you got some booty from those caves. So how, what is your strategy as you come back into the fort uh, you know, uh, you know, to kind of uh, lay low or to explain returning without your, uh, your escort? Quick pitch. Yeah. Fast forward six weeks, that whole thing blew over. We're on to other stuff now. How's Clint, that? I love how you're thinking. Pitch approved. Six weeks later. <laughs> um, who knows what That's happened. how you do it, guys. <laughs> okay. Hey, here's the pitch. 50 yeah. years later, and we're just kind of old friends just hanging out. <laughs> no more, No more fighting. No more... <laughs> That literally okay. changes nothing because you and I are both incredibly long lived. So that's, don't I don't know why you've stayed level one this long, but pitch approved. 15 <laughs> years later, um, the Ford on the Far Seas, you've been hanging out with Kurt's character, Mr. Sirius, for years. iPods <laughs> exist now. There are no iPods. No, I'm going to veto that part. But everything Still else. using Zunes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everything. Maybe there's some sort of magic item that could play music for you, but you don't have one. You've got to go explore and kill orcs to get it. But uh, right now you're sitting in the tavern with no name where there is a table that has been carved with a map of the area by many adventurers who have gone venturing outside the fort into the wilds. Um, you can hear outside of the tavern uh, the 10-foot pole vendor shouting about his wares, 10-foot poles, 10-foot poles for sale. You hear people bustling about, uh, uh, criminals and mercenaries shouting for grog here in the tavern. 
and you can decide what to do on this fine day 15 years after the last session. I can't believe we've jumped that far ahead, but there you have it. Uh, what would you like to do today, gentlemen? I'd like to ask this guy what uh, these 10-foot poles are for. Yeah, that's, that was my first question. Right off. <laughs> I, thought, I just assumed it was a D&D thing, that everybody's got 10-foot poles. Everybody well, loves to right. talk. <laughs> Everybody loves to talk to the 10-foot pole vendor. Traven Gorm is his name. And he says, Oh, let me tell you about my 10-foot poles. These are the finest poles in all of the civilized land, carved to size and with precision by the Gorm family. For generations, we've taken wood, big trunks of various trees, cedar, oak, ash, and we've whittled it down in a holistic process to create perfectly measured 10-foot poles. Now, what are they for? That's a great question, young man. They are for poking things ahead of you. Um, uh, Suspicious-looking uh, lumps. Um, uh, Dangerous-looking doors. Um, animals you've never seen before. I recommend poke, giving them a hard poke before you go near them. That is what my 10-foot poles are for. Would you like to purchase one? Yes, you, you had a question. Yeah, Anybody, yeah. if you have questions, please do raise your hands. Yes, you. Mr. Sirius would like to know, do you have a holder for your 10-foot pole? Because if, if you know, traveling with it could be quite unwieldy. That's true, yes. And that is why we do manufacture this line of sort of, the, some of them are like duffels, mm -hmm. and others are kind of like holsters mm -hmm. for the pole. Some people prefer to wear it on the back. Mm -hmm. um, some wear it on the hip. Often that's more of a way that, you know, the ladies like to wear it. But, you know, men like to wear it that way, too. It's really up to you. I'll buy a pole. Um, as and a, a holder. Hang yeah. on. I made Kurt's character. I know he does not buy a pole. I oh, spent no. every piece of gold he had. Oh, no. <laughs> you have no gold. What a great oh, reason no to adventure. What? <laughs> I'm afraid not, young man. A uh, man who's 15 years older than when we started this. <laughs> I'm afraid not. You don't have any gold. Pardon me, sir, but get the fuck out of my square of cobblestone. Jesus Christ. These are the finest poles in the land, and they don't go for nothing. There's no credit at Traven Gorm's pole stand. After he's rude to my friend, I say to him, I wouldn't fuck you with one of your poles. Ooh, and I have right. five of them. You know what? That's it. I'm moving. You guys can't talk to me like that, and I'm going to speak to the marshal. And he starts putting, like, lots of poles into a bag. <laughs> See, I knew he had a holder. He's got the best one. He's got... This is... You can't even buy sure. this one. This one's just for me. Custom. Yes. Um, and he's pushing his poles away. They don't like riffraff here at the fort on the far seas. They don't like people with no coin. You've got to prove that you are a productive member of this uh, colony community. Do I do I have money from the last yeah. game? Yeah, you have lots. Rich. I have yeah. Lots. You okay. haven't touched it in 15 years. I want to I want to wave some of it in front of the poll guy and say this all could have been yours if you weren't so rude. <laughs> um in fact now uh just because it would be great if something uh you know got dangerous for a second uh, a couple of the guards walk up and they're like is there some kind of trouble here? Uh, no, none at all. And I'll pat each of my uh, friends on the back and say, the, porn, the pole vendor will outlive us all. We, we should really be on the move. But he's too popular can, to kill. Maybe maybe we can get the guards. Do the guards know how much of a chode he's being? Uh, they've got their blue tunics on, their silver helmets. They look really kind of, you know, all really kind of tied up in their outfits, uh, really kind of stiff. And uh, these are young guys. They, they they look like they have something to prove. Do you want to do you want to talk to them about your, your issue with the pole vendor or you just want to go go somewhere else? Go off adventuring. Can you tell I that that's what I'm hoping say. happens? <laughs> I have nothing to say to the guards about the pole vendor. If that's the question. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm over the poles. You guys have been causing trouble here for 15 years. When are you going to grow up? Start a family. Do something with your lives. Are the guards or the pole guys saying this? This is the guards. They're talking okay. very differently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, 
Traven Gorn, asshole though he may be, uh, is right that uh, Mr. Sirius, uh, we've been standing on formality that low these 15 years in which you will never share with us your full name. Uh, and as a result, I don't feel it's fair for me to loan you money, but I will take you out and show you where Doink and I made our fortune in the caves to the West. Thank you so much. And please call me Mr. Sirius. Mr. Mr. Sirius was my father. <laughs> uh, very good. So uh, your friend, your friend Bupel von Borpelsbley leads you out past the warehouses, past the, the, the common stables, out through the huge wooden doors that close at night and do not open until dawn, out onto the hillside where you're looking at the green and verdant aisle of the sword. Um, and down the hill is a dirt path. Uh, one, uh, it forks. One fork leads off to the east. The other leads off to the west and to the seashore. So, Bupel von Borpelsby, you've been here 15 years, but you think that the caves are in the opposite uh, cardinal direction. It's cool. No big deal. Uh, you, you, yeah. you you, figure it out when you get out and look at it. You're just a little I confused. nailed it. Yeah. Um, so, so, the, the, I, the caves like to, that way. I'm, I'd like to go to the caves because I'd like to make more money because I want to start an 11-foot foot pole shop and sell them right across from the 10-foot pole guy for the same price. <laughs> same price. You'll be losing money at 11 feet. Don't need okay. money. All right. You want um, to be that rich. I want to be that rich. Yeah. I want to I want to have <laughs> fuck you pole money like Nate. Like I want to be the Elon Musk of the pole world. <laughs> Ignoring the problems on this planet. <laughs> so it's a great shiny day out. Um, the, the air is clear. You can hear the surf crashing off to the west, but you head mm. down the pa uh, the forked path, down the dirt path toward the east. And it's a day's travel to the caves where you originally found all that gold and uh, had an encounter with goblins some 15 years ago. This suddenly feels a lot like the first chapter of The Lord of the Rings, where they keep going, remember 11 years ago when Bilbo <laughs> did all that stuff? Well, that's super important now. Um, you, uh, you see uh, to your right, to the south, you see the great river flowing, uh, and beyond that, the swamps where you encounter the lizard men. Um, but that's not... Uh, that's not where you're going today. Today you are headed, you are headed to the caves, and let's see if anything interesting happens on your journey. In fact, you encounter nothing, but uh, some tree. some beautiful birds flying overhead. Maybe a maybe a rabbit hops across your path. But I take but, my shirt off. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting okay. the sun. Yeah, uh, lovely. It's a lovely Our summer softness. day. Um, is anybody else taking their shirt off just cur out of curiosity? Uh, Why not? I'm wearing – great. I'm wearing plate mail. I feel like it was, it's quite an endeavor to take it off. So no. Oh, that's a good point. What kind of armor is everybody wearing? I have chain mail, but I've taken my shirt out from that, and so it's just resting on my skin. Just the chain mail. nice. Beautiful. Yeah, that's that probably does feel good. What about you, Bo Doink? What kind of ar armor are you wearing? I'm wearing chain mail as well. Um, but I'm I'm a little fancier, so I'm gonna take the chainmail and the shirt off, and then just put the chainmail back on. Oh, okay. That's gonna chafe. Okay. Uh, and uh, can I ask what is your strength scores and your constitution scores? Strength, of course, is how strong your character is, and then constitution is how hale and hearty they are, how healthy they are. My strength is nine. My constitution is fourteen. Ooh, yeah. And uh, how about you, uh, Mr. Sirius? My strength is 15, and my constitution is 13. Wow. Um, so uh, I'm just going to say, just for the benefit of anybody watching in the chat, or, or maybe Boople, you know, your character notes this, these guys look great with their shirts off. Like, <laughs> uh, really? I mean, you know, not necessarily cut, but, like, they've been eating right. Like, they've been, like, kind of, like, paying attention to their bodies a little bit in a way to kind of like keep health and longevity kind of at the forefront of their lives. I eat one onion and one beer for lunch every day. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, of course, Doink's an elf, which I think, you know, they're, they're semi-immortal. And uh, you never really see a like a, p a pudgy elf. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So you uh, make it uh, to the uh, to the caves. 
Uh, eventually, the the dirt track it starts to kind of uh, it starts to kind of cut left and cut north, and you find yourself kind of walking up into some hills and some mountains. And by walking into the caves area, you I have uh, activated don't, don't the written it. text that don't. I read every single Fuck. time you get to the caves of chaos. The forest you have been passing through has been getting more dense, tangled, and gloomier than before. The thick, twisted tree trunks, unnaturally misshapen limbs, writhing roots, clutching and grasping thorns and briars, all seem to warn and ward you off, but you have forced and hack your way through regardless. Now the strange growth has suddenly ended. You have stepped out of the thicket into a ravine-like area. The walls rise rather steeply to either side to a height of about a hundred feet or so. Dark streaked rock mingled with earth. Clumps of trees grow here and there, both on the floor. Oh, there we go. Oh, you know what? By activating the map, you got me to stop reading the description, Clinton. Truck. It's that easy? Yeah, that's what just all, all you need to do. Tight. Okay. So this is our cave area. So that brown area in the middle there is um, that's sort of the floor of the valley here. And uh, to the to the right, to uh, where uh, where it kind of goes off the map a little bit, where you see Goblin Cave at the bottom, that's kind of where you're walking in. You're walking in here from uh, that area, and um, you can see that the caves are at different elevations. Like there are some that are down there on, on the ground floor, on the on the floor of the valley, but some are way up higher in the hills. You can also see that previous adventurers have been here. And they've mapped them for you a little bit. They've they're letting you know what is there. So so far in our uh, ongoing campaign, we have discovered a cave of goblins uh, behind a bush. There, a hidden ogre cave, um, a hidden kobold cave, uh, and another bush over there. And then a real the, the time that we killed three <laughs> three characters in one night was the Minotaur cave up on the uh, second level there. Um, so. Um, uh, things is, there, are, is there no like just pastures where bad things hang out? They're all caves. Uh, well, I mean, these are. See, well, how how, how to explain this to you? <laughs> when <laughs> when the gods created the civilized races, they made some mistakes, um, and the creatures that dwell here in the caves of chaos are gods. The mistakes of the gods, the horrible half-formed mutants, uh, disgusting <laughs> mongrel beasts that are almost as intelligent as man and twice as ferocious, petty, and cruel. Um, so they like to live in caves and, okay. you know, they have tables and little cups and, you know, everything people have except for, um, you know. Manners. Really? Manners, exactly. Yeah, thank you. So, um, and, and, and I can tell you that as soon as you walk into this area, the, the entire, the entire mood shifts. It's like the sun goes behind a cloud. Suddenly your nipples right underneath your chainmail get really kind of erect, uh, because it kind of, there's kind of a cold shiver goes up your spine yeah. and you realize you've come to a corrupted, a foul and corrupted part of this, this aisle. And so what would you like to do, gentlemen? We can throw the map up there again, Mr. Trucks, yeah. to see if there's a, a, an option. So uh, I've been here a few times, guys. Uh, you know, it's a real grab bag. You know, just kind of pick one. They're all equally dangerous. <laughs> What's a um, kobold? I, uh, a kobold's like a little dog lizard man. Whoa. I'd like to go to a cave that no one's gone into yet. Ooh, Brand new, new one. Fresh cave. I'm into I it. I like that. Fresh cave. Uh, fresh you know, cave. First, right. Uh, this cave right here. This is this is Virgin Cave. All right. You guys want to check out that cave? Got to check out that cave. Great. Okay. Do we do we get to write what it says on the map about that cave? I mean, uh, sure. Yeah. Or I mean, we have you, to make it out alive first. Well, are you going to? You probably have to make it out alive. You have to make it back to the fort, and then Carving I know what the table. I know what you're going to do, Nate. I know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to write. You're going to you're going to write a false note to the other adventurers, aren't you? I don't know. Okay. Well, <laughs> just make it out alive, and you're going to be fine. You're going to be absolutely fine. Uh, okay. Open for lemon drops. Did the gods make any <laughs> lemon drops they don't like? 
Put him in uh, a cave. Mm -hmm. That's it's probably unlikely. Um, okay, you um, you climb the slope. It's kind of it's you know you're kind of like uh, it doesn't take hard climbing. You can kind of just kind of really hoof it with your feet, but it's very steep. And you get up to that second level, and you are now looking into a uh, into a cave um, about uh, ten or twenty feet back. You can see something kind of on the wall uh, beyond the, the 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 portal, the entrance into this cave. Um, but right now, you're not sure exactly what you're looking at unless you have infravision. Who has infravision and can see in the dark? I have it. Oh, the dwarf right. and the elf both have it. Okay, so um, looking uh, through uh, into the cave, you see that in fact there is a wall about about uh, fifteen to twenty feet back. That is covered. It's like a shelf full of skulls and heads. And you can see that there are just like skulls that look like they've been there a very long time. And there are also um, heads of humans that look like they're maybe a little fresher, you know, parts of their, you know, head viscera are still glistening uh, red and pink. And then there's even uh, uh, the head of some kind of green skinned beast with a horrible swine-like proboscis and little tusks coming out of its mouth right in the center, kind of like looking out at you on this like kind of shelf of heads. I'm going to... Anyone know how much uh, heads are worth? Um, that's a great question. We can go looking for gold teeth or something, but I'm going to hold my hand up and just watch the heads for a minute. Uh, and and um, a full minute. I know a make guy. Sure none of them are. Make sure no one's breathing. Top dollar, top dollar for heads. <laughs> um, well, Boople, um, that was a very smart move, Boople. That's some good D and D play because as you watch very carefully, you see that that one creature head, the one that looks like a swine with green skin. I felt it's, like a lot of attention was paid to him. Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, there were subtle clues. It was almost, you could almost never figure it out, but you just <laughs> happened to do it. Uh, he is, in fact, like slowly trying to slink back from. I'm going to cross his... him in the face. Okay, let's see if you can kill him in one shot. We're not going to roll initiative and everything this turn. I'm just going to let you have that crossbow roll. Does a 17 do it? A 17. Let's see. I think it does, in fact, do it. But I'm just going to make sure. Um, and, yeah, here he is. Um, yeah, that hits him. How much right. damage did you do? I've not rolled yet. I know there's no um, hit locations or anything in this game. But I'm shooting him in the head. I did five damage. If five he damage. Five points, that's he's him, right? he's kind of creeping back, and all of a sudden, Boopless crossbow bolt goes chunk into his skull, and he <laughs> lays there with like drool and blood coming out of his mouth. Um, he was definitely kind of spying through like a spy hole, and now he's dead, and he didn't even get to raise an alarm. Good job, Boopel von Borpelsby. That's like the dumber version of cutting eye holes out of a painting. Uh, well, I'm so glad it was no challenge to you whatsoever, okay? They thought it was pretty clever. I just <laughs> sure. want to say, how do you know he wasn't nice? Good question. Uh, he was surrounded by severed, fresh severed heads. Just well, kind Maybe of... he was hiding from whatever did it. Oh, good point. You know what? If there's egg on my face, I will. I will own up to that. Okay, um, I will tell you that you can hear now that you've done that sounds of activity coming from, uh, you know, it seems that when you go back to that back wall, it forks again. You can go in either of two directions, left or right. You can see, you can hear sounds of activity coming from the left, the left hand passage. But there's also a passage to the right up ahead uh, once you get up to where his head and those skulls are sitting. I'm going um, left. I need I'm going to reload my crossbow i'm gonna say if you were gonna put your shirt on now might be your last opportunity all right i'm putting my shirt back on 
<laughs> okay, uh, everybody's got their shirt back on. Uh, no, great. no, everyone doesn't have their shirt back on, Jared. <laughs> I, all, all I'm going to say is it takes 10 minutes to put your shirt back on because uh, chain mail is quite complicated. Uh, and in that time, I may roll an encounter roll. I didn't I didn't uh, put mine on. Yeah. Mine, all right, I'm going. No, mine's I'll, staying I'll off. Keep it off. I'll keep it off. Okay, keep it off. That's probably a good idea because wandering monsters are everywhere. Now, remember, in this version of Dungeons and Dragons, the idea is to get as much gold as you can and get out of there because you get XP for every gold coin that you get. You also get XP for killing monsters, but that's not quite as important as getting that gold. And once you get that gold, you can open your own 11 foot pole shop. And that is the goal this evening. Um, okay. So why don't we just collect all these heads on the shelf, bring them to my head guy, get five gold a head, call it a day. Heads are going five gold? Where did you hear that? I Doink have, it. Doink I have a guy. Great head. We know that. <laughs> now, we Doink. Money for it. No, Doink, that's that's incorrect. I mean, you might get a head, you might get a little bit of a bounty for the orc head there, but keep in mind that's still attached to a body. He just has a a crossbow bolt coming out of his skull. Um, uh, There's a lot of heads. We may flood the market. It's uh, it's not it's not completely pitch black inside, but it's quite dark. There are sounds coming from the passage to the left, uh, uh, and uh, it sounds sounds of activity, bustling, movement, uh, even like furniture moving. Uh, to the left, and there's also a passage to the right. Uh, do we avoid confrontation by going to the right where there's not noise, or do we head straight towards the commotion? It could be a red herring. You know, you always want to go down the quiet path, and then surprise, it's filled with silent spiders or something. <laughs> so then we've got guys at our back end, spiders yeah. at our feet. All right. I say we uh, go to the devil we know. I'm on board. Okay. okay. Um, great. Um, so um, you guys uh, are uh, walking. Uh, you walk up to that wall where all the heads were. And, and you can now see if you look down the passage to uh, the right, the quiet passage, we called it. You can now see that there are several other creatures with those big uh, swine-like faces uh, you know, uh, clad in like chain mail and holding uh, spears. But the ones that you can you can see visible down the passage, the passage is about, about another 10 feet down the passage. Um, they're kind of like sitting and like they seem half awake. There's a little bit of thicker, flickering firelight in that room uh, and they don't seem quite very alert. Um, so, so far they have not noticed you. Um, you said that you were headed to the left, right, guys, where you heard the uh, the movement? Well, now, mm -hmm. now that we've seen that, we should definitely kill sleeping guards, right? Don't, mm -hmm. don't leave those guys behind us. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll kill them. None of I'll us can move them. quietly. We may want to try and do this from a distance if we can. I have a missile. I have a bow. All right. Let's let's go whole hog. Shoot, shoot everything we got. Okay. Um, I'm going to now go a little bit in combat order, but I'm going to allow you guys a surprise attack because you took care of their sentry, right, without anybody hearing. So I'm going to let you have a free attack right now, and then if any of them are alive after that's over, we're going to go into combat order. So if people would like to um, look at what their uh, ranged attack bonus is, that's usually uh, your dexterity, and then I think for fighters they get an extra plus one. Is that right, Clint? I think that's right. No, I don't think they do. Oh, wow, they don't. You're right. Okay, so you're just going to uh, roll uh, a d20, and I will tell you whether you... There are two uh, of these creatures visible down the hall right now, like kind of sitting in like on like stools and like looking at other creatures inside that room with them, but you only see two of them. So we all uh, do? We all roll? We all yeah, roll. do you all want to attack? Go ahead and make rolls. Uh, uh, all right. So... We should say which ones we're going at so we don't all three hit one guy and then leave the other person uninjured, right? Yeah. Uh, so well, let's go, let's go one, one at a time. Around. Okay, yeah. So how many guys are there again, Jared? Only two we, visible right now. Only two yep. visible right now. Okay, I'll go for whatever one Clint is uh, not going for. So there's one a little closer to you in profile and one a little farther away kind of in the corner of that room. Who's less in profile? You can see him a little bit more of his front. I'll do the closer one. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, can you give us the range in feet, Jared? 
Yeah, I can give you the range in feet. I'm going to say to that guy, to the farthest one, it's about 20 feet. To the closer one who's in profile, it's about 15 feet. So I've got, uh, I've so, got a plus one on both of those. Exactly. This is close range for everybody, so everybody gets a plus one. Uh, and oh, there, yeah, Kurt's camera's back. <laughs> oh, sorry. Does my camera go away when I do that? Okay, I'll yeah. have to roll on my phone. Sorry about that. That's okay. No problem. Okay. Uh, we I'm just figured roll. you wanted to take your penis out for a minute, like some people <laughs> do on <laughs> Zoom calls. It happens. Uh, okay. Uh, how'd you do? Poople von Borpelsby. And which one were you firing at? 16, uh, the seated one. Uh, so the farther away one. The farther away one. Okay. Uh, 16 is a hit. Great. But you want to kill him in one round if you can, in one fell swoop. I don't think I did. I did four. He dies. <laughs> and uh, but now, like in slow motion, I'll, I'll make it all happen. Like you see the one beside him, like look over and like start to squeal and then turn back toward. But that's the friends. one. That's the one I'm shooting at. Go for it, Doink. And I rolled a six. A six is not good. Your arrow goes flying past him, uh, and so it's up to Mr. Sirius. 20. What Holy the? Shit. 19 is perfect. That's incredible. Okay, so 19 hits him, so now do the damage for... What, what kind of missile were you using? It just says missile. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It, it is a hatchet, a hand axe. Ah, oh, I see. Hand axe. Oh, you threw your hand axe? That's badass. That's some Daniel Day-Lewis... Last of the Mohican shit. That's okay, how much uh, can you roll a? I believe it's a d6 for a hand axe. Can I roll a d6 for a hand axe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. To see how much damage you do. Five. That kills him. Your axe lodges into the side of his head and he goes down. And now you hear squealing uh, coming from that room. And, and I now. Say, Whoa, my arrow that just missed the guy. It's it like scared him and then he got right in the way of the axe man we did we did great the three of us that was yeah like old school alley -oop. Mm -hmm. nate tries uh nate's character tries to give your character a fist bump and then uh, we have to go into uh true combat order so um is anybody retreating no it seems like you guys uh, are hanging out i'll i'm gonna back up uh at least to wait till i get to oh, wait till i get to movement mr trex um let's now roll our initiative okay so you guys roll a d6 and i'll roll a d6 we're rolling for our side right so that's uh, right to see who goes first which side goes first roll, roll for us i'll give a roll and we roll a four Four. So uh, after you guys got your surprise round, these guys move into action very quickly. And so they will be going first now that we've headed into combat proper. So now I'm going to, because you've killed two of their men, I'm going to give them a morale roll. Okay. Which uh, if they fail their morale roll, they may decide not to fuck with you at all because they're scared of you. Uh, let's see how it goes. Their morale is... <laughs> okay, um, they are squealing, but they are staying back. They are staying back, and you can see them kind of peek around the side every once in a while, and you can see them, like, quickly hurrying to arm their, uh, well, actually, they're going to throw spears. So instead of running out to, like, kind of try to stab you to death, they're going to stay back, and they're, like, squealing and grunting, and now they're going to start uh, throwing uh, their, uh, they're going to start throwing their spears at you. Let's see how they do. There, Thacko is that. All right, they're going to throw a spear at. Let me see. I'll, I'll choose. I'll uh, I'll decide this fairly. They're going to throw a spear at Boople's von Borp, Boopel von Borpelsby. So sorry. Ready, Boople? Ready. They rolled a 19. They hit you, my friend. Ooh, yeah, they did. That's not good, my friend. Okay, here's Thank their damage. This is where Boople might be dead here in the first. 46 yep. minutes of the game. Five damage, Boople. Motherfuck. Are you dead? No, I'm not dead, but I mean, like, it's kind of thing that makes you rethink taking one more step. Oh, God. Did, am I? 
It's uh, who's? Uh, oh, is it? It's not me. Okay, he'll be you. okay. He's. I mean, look, he's he's wounded. This is what happens. We've uh, chat. We've actually rigged the streaming software. When you are <laughs> badly injured, it's gonna make people freeze. And until he heals up, we get to look at that beautiful mug. All right. Um. <laughs> Another another uh, orc. I'm sure Clint will be back in a minute. Another orc uh, throws his spear at you. This guy is throwing it at. Let me decide fairly. That's gonna be that's gonna be Mr. Serious, and he rolls. Let's see. What's your AC, Mr. Serious? Your my, your armor class. My armor class is six. Guess what? He what? doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't get you. He doesn't hit yeah. you. Yeah, baby. Um, so uh, the spear just goes flying past you. Um, and uh, now it is your side's turn because they are staying back in that room. They don't want to have to make melee attacks. And so um, you guys can decide what to do. We're going to start by asking you, uh, would you like to retreat at all? Uh, Nate, I mean, like, I feel like I feel like we could kill all of them. How many are there? Clint, you're back. There it appear to be only two. Only two have like okay. peeked out and thrown spears I'm, I'm at feeling, you. I'm feeling I'm feeling pumped. I want to I want to cut these pigs. Yeah. Okay. So right. I, I'm going to I'm going right. to I'm going to I'm going to shoot a shoot an arrow. Okay, um just to let you know before uh shooting an arrow, um you are allowed to uh try movement. Do you want to move anywhere or do you want to just kind of stay posting up where you're at? You're kind of like beside that wall I described with all the skulls on it, kind of looking down to your, you know, into that chamber. Is that fine? Are, are there? they within 50 feet of me? They sure are. Yeah, uh, is there somewhere where I can like get a little shelter or cover? Um interesting. Um you know, yeah, you could kind of go back uh, to like around the edge of that. You know, you came in through a passage and then there to the right. So you could kind of come around that uh, that corner if you'd like. You want to no, move I'm there? I'm going to take, take a little bit of cover. Okay, great. You and do I'm, so. I'll do that too. Great. You do that as well. Boople? And, and, uh, sure, I very much need cover. Boople, uh holding his uh, innards <laughs> into his uh, abdomen, uh, uh uh, bleeds in the same direction as you guys. Uh, and now you're all kind of looking around. So they're looking around the corner of their little chamber. You're looking around the corner of your little chamber. And I think that's enough to give everybody a plus one on their AC, a plus one on their AC because they're using cover. And so would you like to try to fire at them, uh, Mr. Uh, Doink and Mr. Sirius? Oh, absolutely. Okay. All right, um, let's go ahead. Uh, whatever order you guys would like, you can fire at them. Doink. Take I'll, it away. I'll do it. I say, guys, I'm feeling good about this arrow. My last, my last one missed, I but this the one. I kissed the tip of the arrow. This okay. It's been kissed. Do I have any bonuses from the kiss? I'll allow that as a free action. Um, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to make it take up an action. That's pretty nice of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'm Mr. Feeling... Serious kisses all your arrows. I love that. Okay, <laughs> I'm feeling extra positive from it. I'm rolling a twenty, and I roll. A five. Mm. Um, your arrow sort of like clatters against, uh, you know, the side of, of the uh, the portal into the little guard room that they're in. Uh, and I say, uselessly. hey, real quick, were we supposed to shoot the guys or the side of the portal? <laughs> and uh, and uh, the uh, two uh, creatures, which I will now admit are orcs, look at each other like, who are these guys? Uh, and then it is Mr. Sirius's turn to uh, fire. All right, here we go. D20. Yes, sir. Oh, come on. D20 roll I have to do? Yeah. Yeah. Five. Oh, no. No, no good. Um, it, 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 it goes the exact same arc as... Uh, as Doink's arrow, it kind of clatters in the exact same way. You got to really watch the lip of that chamber. It's, it's catching a lot of arrows. It's up to Boople von Borpelsby. Uh, I... Uh, begin to reload my crossbow, which has the feature slow. So I have to take this turn to reload. Okay, well, that's your side's turn. You've moved and you've fired a weapon. They are going to do a morale roll, and they are they are okay. They they're they're okay again. They they've decided you guys aren't as big of a threat as they thought. And so for their movement this turn, they're running all the way down the passage to you guys. Oh, so no. there are two. Uh, 
grunting, snorting orcs in front of you, wearing chain mail with their uh, disgusting swine-like smells filling your nostrils and making you want to puke. And they raise uh, their second spear above their head, and they are going to attack. And I will decide who they will attack fairly by rolling my D3. And Boopal Von Borplesby. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it was fun. <laughs> Uh, Clint knows uh, that I love to kill him in this game. Well, uh, yeah, you talked about the session where you killed three players, or three characters. They were all three me. <laughs> yeah, they were all three your character. Well, uh, you'll be glad to know that this orc rolled a four with his uh, spear uh, stab, and he missed you terribly. Uh, and now the other one rolls and gets a three, and he is attacking Doink, the elf. And here comes his attack. And that is a pathetic seven. What's your AC, Doink? Uh, five with a plus one from our little cover. So you actually are at a four right now. So that's not a seven does not hit you. So these guys, maybe uh, they maybe got ahead of themselves running out. Um, but I will say that they are making a lot of loud noise as mm. they squeal and uh, shout at you. Um, and so it is now uh, your side's turn. They are now right in front of you. They're filling the path. They're blocking your entrance farther into the room. You know, like the, that that shelf of heads is now behind them. They're kind of right. standing in that that fork. I'm going to um, shoot one again. And I want to say, Mr. Mr. Sirius, last time you, you kissed my arrow and it unfortunately did nothing. I think we need to try something a little more intense this time. Can I put this arrow in your butt? <laughs> Okay. Mr. Sirius is down with that. <laughs> okay. He's a fun guy. It does feel like we are playing uh, at age 12 in our parents' basement. Um, uh, so, uh, Mr. look. Mr. Sirius is ironic. That's ironic. Right. He's actually a silly guy. The doink uh, ba boink. Yeah. The doink ba boink. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, whatever you tap his ass with it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and do you attack, sir? I'm attacking. Here we go. Twenty. Well, let let me let me let me say this. Do you want to move back from them, or do you want to just shoot them point blank here? I want to do a point blank shot. Okay, go yeah, for actually, it. Yeah. Okay. Take take plus two since you're point blank. Plus two, and then how many bonuses for the for the butt? Uh, <laughs> none. But I'm not going to make that take you five minutes, okay. which it did in real life. <laughs> so I roll a eleven plus two. That's thirteen. Guess what? That is a hit. Hey! All right. Oh uh, wait, is it? Just what was it? Minutes. What was it all together? Oh yeah, Thir no, no, wait, wait. Thirteen all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a hit. That's a hit right now. Go ahead. Okay. Damage roll. Make me a damage roll. Okay. I roll a a one, but with my uh bonus from range. So that's a that's a two. Oh man, see, this is the thing. If you come at orcs, you best come because now this guy's in melee range of you with his spear. He could hit you and kill you next turn. You've done about like you know half of his HP and damage. You're in danger, Doink. Now am I allowed to take my movement now? You, according to this rule set, are not allowed to take your movement now. Um, okay. And uh, so we will now go to uh, whoever else would like to act on your side, Boople or uh, Mr. Sirius. Mr. Oh, you attack. serious? Okay, With go for sword. it. Oh, here we go. Are you attacking the one that Doink just hit or the other? Oh wow, I'm a, I'm an closer? idiot. Um, I'd say the one that he hasn't hit is closer to you. I yeah. forgot I also had a sword that was stronger. Anyway, that's on me. Look, is no use crying over spilled milk, Doink the it's Elf. It's on me. Uh, I said it's on me, Jared. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Sirius, please make your sword attack, sir. All right, D twenty, right? Yes, sir. Twelve. Okay, uh, they uh, a twelve, but you get twelve all together, or twelve with your plus one. I think you get a plus one, right? Oh, uh, twelve does. is just what I rolled, so I get a plus one. Thirteen. So you get a thirteen. So that is a hit. Yes. Roll your damage, sir. Okay, I roll a six. A d six. Uh, swords yes. d eight. D eight. Oh, Ooh, d eight. That's lovely. 
Oh, I roll a D8. Okay. Like it helps. Three. Three. Not quite enough to put either of these guys down. So uh, now it is a loud swords are clattering against armor. Spears are meeting blades and Boople von Borpelsby bringing up the rear. How can you take out bo both of these orcs have been injured. How can you take them out both at the same time? Here's how, Jared. I'm going to do for the first time in six sessions of uh, <laughs> um, Thacko Tuesday, I actually went to the combat section of the book. Yes. I'm going to do a thing called a fighting withdrawal meaning I'm going to move half my movement back towards the cave mouth, lining up these two idiots, and then crossbowing them with the crossbow that I have been slowly reloading. For the last I'll time. allow it. I'll allow it. Fighting withdraw. All right. Wait, so Rolling. you're trying to, I'll tell you something. You're trying to hit both of them at the, with one bolt? Lining them up. Okay. Through one into the next one. Yeah. I can That's I right. can buy that your fighting withdrawal lines them up. I, I can buy that that lines them up. But you need to roll really well to hit them both. Okay? You he's have to roll to. really well. Uh, I mean, he's going I've to be doing okay. He put those dice doing okay. Cut, so. <laughs> <laughs> a 17. Yeah. Uh, 18 with a plus one for a ring. Yeah. You know what? If I had to pick a number that would be the number I would require for the bolt to go through both guys, it would be 18. Do your damage. Hell yeah. Do your damage. Three. Three. Okay, get this. You do two damage to the first guy. That's at the HP that he had left. He's dead. The other guy had three out of four of his HP gone, thanks to Mr. Sirius. Yeah. That's your last bit of damage. One, you kill them both. Uh, but but now it, it sounds as if the alarm has been uh, has been brought up. Let me see what happens when we roll on the wandering monster table. If anybody has uh, been alerted to it yet, if anybody is responding, uh, no, no one has responded yet. Right? Wow. Okay. Interesting. That's what happens when you randomize things on tables. Uh, I guess they're still getting ready or arming themselves, but you can hear even more commotion um, back, you know, back behind that sort of um, that shelf of heads where that guy was looking through a little sconce. You can hear a lot of commotion back there. And then through that left passage that you guys were originally maybe thinking about going to, you can hear a lot of commotion back there. Do you want to stay or go? Uh, well, yeah. What does Google Google does want not to do? If Boople's not going to make it a conversation, he needs to get out of here. He is very, very hurt. Okay. Poor Boople. Yeah. Poor, poor Boople. So are you guys going to uh, uh, lead a, uh, a tactical retreat? I guess so. We'll, Look, we'll be uh, back. I just need a I, few hours. to. But I up. do it with a sigh. I do it with a sigh, too. <laughs> Uh, well, look, it's, it's both the, the ogres on the mouth before leaving, but like in a fun, like Matthew McConaughey kind of action adventure way. Okay. Not like a Norman Bates. I have sexual designs on the things that I kill kind of way. No, no, no. Just kind okay. of like, a, mwah, mwah, bye bye. Just See you in bed. Um, okay. So, um, you, um, you guys start running out of this did, cave. Did the pigmen have any gold on them? Are you going to stay Ooh, in? Yeah. Here? Are you gonna stay in bodies? I want to check. I want to check their. I want to check their corpses. I see so you guys can go. I'm gonna check the corpses. Oh, I'd like to check. I have no money. I would also <laughs> like to check yeah. some corpses. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. So if uh, are you staying, Boople? Because that's important. Are you staying? So we have we've killed five orcs. One in the wall. Two hold standing guard, and two more who ran around. That's a lot of pockets. I'll I'll help them search. Uh, okay, very good. Um, then let me roll on the uh, treasure and see what comes up for you this time. I'm going to roll on their treasure type. Um, and uh, I'm also going to roll for a wandering monster. I mean, so far the other guards haven't come to uh, deal with you. Uh, but there's a chance they will if you spend, you know, these, these minutes kind of going through their pockets and everything. So uh, let me see. Okay, treasure type. Uh, treasure type D. All right. Oh, so it's a 
percentile roll. So I'm looking at page 230 of my old school essentials here, and I'm rolling on the D type treasure. And I'm rolling a really crazy roll. I'm rolling an O1. Oh, that's uh, gotta be great. And uh, yeah, so these guys, you find kind of like littered all over this area, but in like big pouches on their like uh, on their hips that they keep. Old with school fanny packs. Old school. They have leather fanny packs made out of the faces of humans and oh. kobolds. Yeah, and you unzip the mouth, <laughs> uh, and inside. <laughs> Uh, between the five of them is a thousand copper pieces. A thousand oh, Jesus. copper pieces. Uh, is that like pennies. a bunch of pennies? It's like yeah. a thousand pennies. Yeah, it's Ugh. like a thousand pennies. And then I roll on the encounter table to see if perhaps something wanders up. Let's find out. Oh, damn. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, something's wandering up this time, guys. Let's see what wanders in. Okay. Uh, okay, this is interesting. So while you were kind of like going through their, uh, their pockets and stuff, whatever commotion that has been kicked up by the fighting here has disturbed the bats that are in this cave. And suddenly a big cloud of bats starts like shrieking, coming down off of the ceiling and flying out of the inner chambers of this cave. And let's see if they attack you by rolling a little bit of a reaction roll for you. Oh, I hope they become our friends and we can ride out on a big, big bunch of, a cloud of bats. A cloud yeah. of bats. Um, they are neutral uncertain to you. So I'm going to say, unless you mess with the bats, they're not messing with you. So you guys got your, right now you've done very well. You've got your 1000 coppers free and clear. What would you like to do now? Get uh, gone. Yeah. We, we've made 10 gold <laughs> in the heaviest way possible. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, you um, you head back out. Uh, unless anybody objects, you all head back out of the slope, down the hill. Uh, and uh, let's see, one last time. Let me check one last thing. As you are heading down the slope, do you encounter anything out in the valley area? Um, okay. Yep, you do. So you're heading down the slope. You're heading down to the floor of the valley. And then I, uh, I'm i going to tell you what you encounter as you're moving down into the floor of the valley. Okay. Oh, huh. um, you find it. You see an antelope. Oh. I, I it, ignore it. Are they worth anything? Well, they give lots of good rations of food, and definitely you could sell them back at the fort. Um up to you. No. I'm not chasing an antelope. All right. Okay. I'd, I'd say so far in this game, nature creatures have been very nice to us from the wolf to the tiger to the bats now. I'm not going to mess with this. Mess with this. Yes. Antelope. I hear that. Last, last time you had a strange relationship with a tiger and a dire wolf. Perhaps, maybe, this creature too is not particularly what it seems to be. It watches you with sparkling eyes Ooh. and then dances off, prances off into the uh, foliage uh, as if it had some sort of intelligence behind its actions, but it is gone. And soon um, you run out of the valley and through the brambles and bra back to the <laughs> dirt path. And uh, you're sneezing from all of the, the pollen that you've kicked up. Uh, and eventually you're back on uh, the road to the fort as the sun is going down. And that is when I must once again, as you are traveling, it's like a, it's like a day's journey. Do you want to travel overnight or do you want to camp somewhere? I think we should camp. Let's camp. Camp. I want to put my shirt on. Okay. Um, you are going to camp. So um, where do you want to camp? You know, on one side of the dirt track is the thick forest that you've been through before Bupal von Borpelsby. Uh, and then on the other side of the, uh, the dirt track is the river. And beyond that, the swamps and more forest. 
where would you like to camp? Or do you want to camp right here beside the road? You always want cover, right? We should camp in the woods. I don't know. Do we want to camp sneak up on us? Do we want to camp on the river so we have how how big is the river? Like could could theoretically the river, one could one side has, of it act as like protection? The river has been uh, established as extremely fordable, like extremely like you know if you have to swim, it's just kind of in the middle for like a couple strokes. There's a lot of little sandbars and things. It's not quite a raging rapid or anything like that. Uh, somewhere between the road and the river feels like we can see anything sneaking up on us and we have access to fresh water. How's that sound? Love it. Okay, great. Um, to So to get down to the river, you kind of got to go down like a low rolling slope back down toward the river and the foliage breaks up a lot. There's not quite as many shrubs and bushes and kind of tall grass as you get down toward the muddy banks of the river and you guys want to kind of go in between right maybe maybe perhaps where you're kind of hidden by like a berm that goes down toward the river something like that far enough from the river that nothing can come out snatch us and pull us in well then if someone would like to make sure that you have like really hard to see location they can roll under their wisdom on a d20 their wisdom okay Uh, who would like to give that a shot I have, I have nine wisdom. I have an eight, eight wisdom. Mr. Sirius, it's right. you. <laughs> On a D20, right? Yeah, just try to roll under it. Six. You did That's it. it. You did it. Oh, okay. Um, so, Mr. Sirius, uh, we don't know his backstory. Perhaps a veteran of campaigns. Uh, perhaps he's moved with several armies, but uh, he gets you down where... Just a kind of a berm of the land kind of gives you like a natural wall from the 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 road above uh, and where you can hear not too far away the burbling sound of the river behind you. And are, are you lighting a fire or are you keeping a complete weight? The guy who put an arrow in his butt mid-combat has the highest wisdom. <laughs> That's right. It, yeah. it worked when he did it, Jared. Thank you. Thank you. It did work. It did work. So uh, Doink's Badoink a Doink uh, is magical. He's an elf. Um, so what are we thinking? Is this a, is this a completely dark camp, silent camp, or is it a, you know, you're going to light a fire and kind of like, you know, be comfortable. I tend to say fire because Mr. Sirius can't see in the dark and, uh, there's no point in having somebody on watch if they can't see what's coming. Mm. Okay. Very good. Um, so if anybody has rations in their pack, everybody needs to eat one, or uh, I'm going to give you um, a penalty of some sort. You need to eat. I have a rations. Right. If you, uh, yeah, look how many you have. If you have like eight, just cross one off and take it to seven. In the last 15 years, I probably should have replaced my rations, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've kept the, so these are, so when you pull them out, uh, Bupal, they're extremely old. Uh, some of the biscuits have really been eaten through by weevils, you know, uh, but the hard tack in the, in the jerky is still good. Into it. It's so weird that you just like did an adventure for 15 years, but that's the story we've established. I um, went, I, 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 uh, lived in domestic bliss with a wolf or a tiger. I forget which. Well, uh, actually, no, that's not canon. But um, what would you? Uh, you're eating your you're eating your rations, and uh, who would like the first watch? I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. Uh, he can take it. Uh, okay. I want to be able to sleep as much as I can tonight because I yeah, have a yeah. spear hole. Can me. sleep. Bupal, How long does it uh, take Poopal to heal up? So the great thing about old school rules is he'll just heal up by kind of getting a night's sleep, right? Um, so um, if he can sleep for like six hours here, he'll be good as new. Um, so who who do we decide is taking the first watch? Boople. Mr. Boople. Boople, you're taking the first watch. Okay, so uh, Boople, during your watch. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no is right. Everything is fraught with danger here. During your watch, Boopal, um, you hear something moving up over the berm up near the road. You hear like um, you hear like uh, the sound of hooves. 
<laughs> multiple or a single hooved creature or a, it sounds like a single hooved creature <laughs> Ooh, it better not be a horse oh uh, well here's the thing uh i've met a single hooved creature before and it was wonderful once and terrifying the next um i'm going to investigate and see if it is my friend the 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 unicorn uh, yes, uh, you look up over the berm, uh, you kind of peek at it through the bushes, and there, uh, as bright as moonlight, like it's reflecting moonlight, is the beautiful white unicorn you've met once before, the unicorn that killed your friend, High Prince Fifflebreath, uh, by s smashing his skull in with a hoof. Uh, but the unicorn was quite nice to you, as long as you, you know, you behave respectfully to it, and you don't uh, do anything chaotic evil in its presence. Uh, well, I am uh, lawful, uh, which I know he likes. I'm going to uh, go down one more ration and feed this unicorn uh, some of my biscuits. Ooh, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to give you a plus two to your reaction roll for that. All right. Then it's a total plus three because I have a plus one. Well, my friend, that brings you all the way to a damn 13. And the unicorn is pleased. And it uh, bows and it touches its horn to, uh, it turns out that actually what Doink was asking was actually an ancient rite. You didn't realize that when Doink asked Mr. Sirius if he could touch his butt with an <laughs> arrow, that in fact the elves learned this from the, the unicorns in many ages and millennia past. And so he takes his horn and he just, just pokes you a little bit in the ass. Ooh. <laughs> and as he does that, you regain all of your hit points instantly. Boom. Incredible. Uh, um, let's do that one more time. <laughs> just for um, fun, this one? <laughs> yeah, just for fun. <laughs> so then the unicorn goes, <laughs> and then it looks off into the night, and then it just prances away. It uh, has one I, hoof? It only has one hoof? Well, it has four no. hooves. Oh, okay. but it killed it killed another player with one of its hooves. Great. Uh, I reach into my pack and I pull out a a worn piece of vellum that has been folded and unfolded many times to be looked at and appreciated. Where in the tracery of a light elvish hand is a drawing of this self same unicorn, and I take a quill and I just put a little hash mark for every time I've seen that unicorn. It now says three. <laughs> Yes, it's been 15 years, but you've seen it again. Uh, what does this omen portend? Um, soon it is the next person's turn to take watch, uh, and they may rise to do so if they like. I'll do it. Very good. Um, and um, you rise to take your watch, and uh, Boopel von Borpelsby, you can uh, rest. Um, very good. And um, uh, your, uh, you know, three or so hours pass uneventfully, doink. And then it is if you'd like Mr. Sirius's turn or you guys can get up before dawn and start moving. I'll take a watch. Very good. You take a watch. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Let's see what you, uh, let's see what you find, uh, Mr. Sirius. Your friends are snoring quietly near you. When you see or hear or oh um okay um you hear hoof hoof beats uh, what? over over toward the over toward the uh, the road as well. It's Let's go check it out. Be furious. Um uh so uh, Mr. Sirius looks up over uh, the berm and uh, he too sees a uh, sees an antelope again. He sees another yes. antelope. These are all random tables, guys. So sometimes the same thing comes up over and over. Um, <laughs> so there's an antelope there. Would you like to uh, engage, hunt, uh, or leave it alone? Engage. Engage. I'm feed it one of my rations. Okay. So um, you um, you kind of uh, you kind of come up to it and you're trying to feed it a little bit of uh, what biscuits maybe. Uh, it's beef jerky, actually. Beef jerky. Okay, so you're trying to feed an antelope beef jerky. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to uh, say antelopes, I'm sorry to do this to you, Kurt, but an oh. antelopes are 
herbivores. So that's a negative one to the reaction table roll for an antelope. Uh, let's see how you do. Um, so that's a seven altogether. That means it is neutral and uncertain. So it sort of, uh, so, sort of like mm, touches the uh, mm, touches the uh, the beef jerky and doesn't want it. And how that snorts. That? How, wait, how to do that again, Jared? You want me to do it a couple more times? Just a couple more times. Okay, he does. He goes. He goes. <laughs> you don't know how often I end up playing animals on this show, <laughs> and I think I've. I, I mean, I, not to toot my own horn. I think I've. I've really gotten in touch with the wilderness by doing it. Um, anyway, uh, it doesn't want the beef jerky, and it uh, begins to run off. Anything else? You, it's not quite gone yet. Oh, can I give it some? some wheatgrass juice that I have. <laughs> Do you have wheatgrass juice? I mean, I have rations, right? I can invent what rations I decided to bring with me. Yes. It, the rations are not specified as to what is exactly in them. And I feel like some kind of weird cider made of like grass would make sense. So um, you want to offer that instead? Yes. Okay, one last reaction roll for you. This one is plus one. That time, you get a 12. The antelope likes you. Um, the antelope comes over and it drinks. Mr. Serious presents. <laughs> <laughs> it drinks the wheatgrass juice. Uh, and, then, uh, and then it stands majestically staring down at you like this. And then it, and then I'll do the fucking thing again. And then it. <laughs> drinks the wheatgrass juice. Uh, um, is there any more uh, parlay or or uh, anything else you'd like to do with this answer? I'm gonna ride it. Okay. Um, you want to ride the antelope? Um, so you're going to kind of like try to hop onto its back. Um, in order to do that, I want to get something out of this interaction. I just wasted two ration. I want something from this antelope. Right. Well, it's it's not maybe maybe earlier Boople von Borpelsby told you about the unicorn and you're thinking all of these animals must be magical. <laughs> um, and so Mr. Sirius is going to try to ride the antelope. If you want to try to ride the antelope, I guess I'll just say he's he's standing there. He's ready for you to try it. If you can roll under your dexterity, you hop on its back right now. Okay, under my dexterity. My dexterity is nine. What do I roll? Yeah, roll a d20, and if you D20, roll nine D20, or below, okay. you have hopped on the back of this antelope. 20. Um, I'm afraid that's way too high. So, <laughs> Mr. Sirius, you leap, and you try to leap onto the back of the antelope, and it moves out of the way, and you land down into the sand, and it attacks you once out of anger. Oh, no. <laughs> I just gave it choose. Oh, uh, no. It, it rolls a three. It doesn't hit you. Uh, and then it oh, runs off into the forest. I'm, that remind, Next time I see one, I'm going to kill it. Right. <laughs> In uh, my experience, good. all animals are magical. I don't know how you found one that wasn't. <laughs> a good policy with animals is to kill them on sight. <laughs> um, you uh, you uh, awake soon the sun is up, and uh, you can head back to the fort, or you can head back into the caves because... Your friend Boople is is healed up. I'm in fighting trim. Let's do this. Let's go back to the caves. Caves. Very caves. Good. I would like to make more than five dollars. Yeah, yeah, probably that would be great. Um, okay, so um, if you could throw up the map again, Mr. Clinton Trucks, we'll look at uh, the caves again. Do we want to go back into the same cave, the cave we will now call the Orc Cave, or do we want to try a different cave? Uh. Guys, I kind of lean the same cave because I think we're clearing it out. We yeah, same out cave. five orcs. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, we already there's... killed five orcs. How many can there be? Yeah. Really? Uh, totally. Like, how many can there be? Like, probably not that many left, right, guys? <laughs> That's the thought. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Um, okay, are you heading up to that cave? Into yeah. It. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Um, great. Yeah, I think I know what's going on. All right, so um, you arrive uh, in uh, the valley, and I'll read the text again. Um, uh, um, uh, wait, how did I do that? 
Oh, go. okay. I guess we don't need it since you have the map up. Um, so you arrive in the valley again, and you tromp up the slope uh, to the cave of the orcs, uh, and you can see um, a little bit of what was uh, left behind by your uh, day's previous uh, fighting. Like, there's just, like, a couple of, like, pieces of leather, and, like, you know, when you were, like, ripping open their satchels and stuff, there's, like, a bits of scraps of cloth that the other orcs haven't bothered to clean up from uh, you know, the entry passage into this cave. And you can see back, you can see back to the shelf with the skulls and the human heads on it. And you notice that the space where there was the orc head before, they have cleared out that body. And now there's just a hole that kind of like leads back um, to another area that you can see where they kind of keep a watch on the entrance. And let me check something. Okay, yeah. So as you're watching that hole, my friends who have dark vision, um, you see like uh, an orc move in that farther passage. Like, oh, that. <laughs> do you want to try? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Now this is going to be a tough shot. Sure. I want you to because you have to shoot through like their little, their little like their own their own little arrow hole. You know, so you're going like I'd say you're going like at least like oh we're gonna call it. 35 feet back to hit this guy. Uh, do can, you want to give it a... Can I, as an expert ranged fighter, sort of like ghost style, guide his arms to give him a bonus? <laughs> sure, get on behind me, put your hands on mine. You want to kind of give him the like the uh, the Titanic kind of like, ba- you know, behind oh, him? Yeah, help, 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 help guide his arms to give him a bonus to try and hit this thing. Sure. Um, that'll and give can I you... just get behind Doink and give him a massage while he does that? Sure, absolutely. Um, so um, that's it's your trickle up. down bonus. Let me just add it all up. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna let you roll at plus zero. Wait, Jared. Mm. Yes, I'm being guided by an expert ancient elven archer mm-hmm. who is incredibly relaxed at this moment. I'm within yeah. close range mm-hmm. for my weapon. Yeah. Sure. And I've just received a unicorn blessing, not hours earlier. Yeah, but that was that your would... health coming back. Yeah, but I'm, I feel like I'm just invigorated. I feel like my, my I used to wear glasses, and now I don't. All right, like... you know what? That's a good point. <laughs> Plus zero. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I need to move this camera so everybody can see that I rolled a fucking 19. I believe uh, you. Well, when I did that, it moved the... It does it's a 19 okay. plus one is 20. We yeah, so you can add your plus one for your dexterity and uh, uh for range you, for range. Oh yeah, because it's only within 35 feet. My friend, your arrow goes through it goes through that little like that little hole that they have to watch people through. The, this guy's shoulder, this orc's shoulder is going by, and your arrow goes into his shoulder, but does it pierce all the way through his arm into his chest? How much damage does it do? Five. Five damage. He dies. Flunk. Yes. You've killed yet another orc. By the way, that's, these orcs. That's got to be the last one. For six sure. Orcs so far. That's six. I love so these swingy ass dice. You can just have a really good day. Absolutely. So um, these orcs are worth um, 10 XP a piece. See why you got to go in there and get some coins. You guys have earned 60 XP just from orcs so far. Uh, and then whatever those copper pieces add up to. So um, let me know that, that that guy fell silently. It doesn't appear that anybody is uh, is making any noise. And you don't hear quite as much uh, commotion as you heard before. I, I'm going to reload. Okay. Uh, and let's then head let's in. Go, let's look through that hole. Okay, great. Um, so you move up uh, and you are going to look through that hole and you see the body of the felled orc that you dropped. Um, And you see uh, that uh, there is a passage behind this shelf, right, Uh, that leads, you know, right and left. Um, And um, are you listening carefully? Yeah. I assume that you are. uh, And I Um, have uh, I have the listen ability two and six. Oh, will you please roll that? Sure. Four. Okay, so we said five or six if you have two or six. So I'm going to give you basic information, not like the really good dwarfy information that you could have gotten, which is that um, you uh, hear a little very slight amount of movement in that passage you're looking into, the one beyond the shelf, to the right. 
you hear a little like and uh, you can't really make out what it is or what they're doing but occasionally you hear like a little shuffle or like a little bit of wood creak now i i have a hidden uh, i have an ability to hear noises oh yeah so why I'm don't gonna, you I'm roll gonna, is it two and six it's two and six okay roll your d6 if you get a Ooh. five or six i'll give you more info rolling my d6 three Okay, that's not enough. So I can uh, I can just give you this information though. You are behind. Uh, you're behind Boople while he's like looking through that like little hole, and you know that you know. Remember that where those guys you were having the the arrow fight with before. You hear a couple little noises coming from that chamber again. I tell the I tell the boys. I say, uh, hey boys, we got noise, and I say, let's go to the noise. Because we don't avoid uh, the noids. noise. <laughs> there it was. Great. Um, okay, so you're heading back to that kind of chamber where you where the guys came out of before, right? Is that correct? Yep. You got to kill every single one of them. Are you running in like with your sword, or are you guys kind of sneaking up with your back. arrows? I'm I'm doing uh, a little sneaking. I'm I'm gonna hang back at uh, missile range. Please. Mr. Sirius, are you still running in? Yep. Okay. Hell yeah, Mr. Sirius. Mr. Sirius, you go running in there and uh let's see if they're surprised. You get peppered with arrows like the end of <laughs> Bonnie and Clyde. I'm gonna give them I think this is pretty surprising. I'm gonna give them a negative two on their yeah, they're surprised. You that means you get a free attack. So you run in and the, there are two orcs before there were four in there. Remember, you like because you killed a couple that came out. This time there are just two, and you run in, and they're like, ah! Like, they're so uh, shocked that you kind of run in that you can take a free attack, Mr. Sirius. Let's All right, start. so I'd roll a 20. That's right. Three. Okay, <laughs> you roll in, and you're like, ah! And they're like, ah! And you're like, ah! <laughs> Missed them completely, and now we have to... Each side needs to roll a D6 to see which side is going first. I'll roll for our side. Please do. We got a one. They got a four. They're going first. And the only target they're really aware of right now is Mr. Sirius. Uh, Kurt, it's been a while since you played Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, wait, this is your first time. Um, so it's going to, it really uh, makes me have a heavy heart uh, to murder Mr. Sirius right now. Um, it's, oh. it's sad to see him go, but. Two orcs versus one level one character. It's not looking good, buddy. The orcs are a surprise and horrified by you at first. They will, in fact, you know what? I'm going to give you one little chance. They're going to roll a morale roll because you so surprised them and you seem so confident. Let's see how they do on their morale. They succeed at their morale check. So they are completely fine. When you come in and you miss, they're like, this guy's not shit. And they attack. Uh, here, What is your AC, Mr. Sirius? My ace, my armor class is six. Yeah. Okay. Um, they miss. The first orc misses with his spear. The next one attacks. Ah! And he also misses. He yes. misses as well. Right. So it's just miss, 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 miss. Uh, and now it is your side's turn to act. And so um, let me uh, say, first, we're going to see, does anybody want to retreat? I think no. Stop me if I'm wrong. Um, then we are going to deal with movement. Is anybody moving? So just to set the scene very clearly, Mr. Series is in this little guard room. This little guard room is about eight feet by eight feet. It's kind of where the orcs kind of stand and wait. It's near the entrance to their cave. Um, and there are only two of them in there. There were more before, but you've been killing orcs uh, for a couple nights now. Um, and there's like, a, yeah, there's a little bit of fire, a little torch on the wall that kind of keeps things kind of warm and kind of like with a little bit of light. So Mr. Sirius could see, okay. Um, and he's kind of standing in the doorway, swinging his sword at these two orcs that are immediately coming at him with uh, spears. Any movement? I, I run in past the curve so that I can bring my crossbow to bear. Okay, so you're kind of behind Mr. Sirius, but getting an angle on them, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. and how about you, uh, Doink? Uh, I'm going to kind of get myself aligned in the doorway so I have a little bit of cover so I can shoot at them. It's going to be kind of hard for you because you've got your two buddies kind of filling that doorway now. Do you understand that? I understand. Then I, okay. will, I will instead use them as my cover. I'll get in that room <laughs> just, just behind them. 
<laughs> great, great. Okay. Um. So, so to to be clear, are you looking around the corner or are you running up behind them? I'm up behind them. I'm in the room. Okay. So everybody's kind of up at the doorway to that room, but um, for Doink, it's going to be a little hard because he's got two guys in front of him. Okay. Uh, that was our movement missile attacks, gentlemen. Who's taking a missile attack? I am. I'm taking a missile attack. Okay, go for it. Let's go Boople von Borpelsby first. Uh, 12, but uh, it, this is close range, so plus one. Uh, and that is uh, a 13. And uh, I uh, am going to... I can't give it to you. I can't give it to okay. you. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's not, yeah. That's, not, that's not good enough. You said... What was it again? What did you roll? A 12, but I have a plus one, so 13. Oh, that is a hit. I was looking at the wrong Thacko line. Yes, you hit. All right. Two. Two damage. Woo, not very good, uh, but not very bad either. Um, so, uh, chunk, your arrow kind of like goes into the guy's shoulder. Uh, not enough to like really kind of put him down. And now uh, a missile attack from Doink. Yes. Aiming at the Do same guy. Doink, I'm going to give this guy a little more AC, okay? So normally he's like, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you. Normally he's an AC 6. I'm going to give him an AC of like, uh, f there are two people in front of you. I'm going to give him an AC of 4 to uh, make it clear that he's kind of protected by your buddies who are kind of in front of him. Okay, I am rolling. And I roll a 8 with... A plus one for close range, so that's a nine. I'm afraid, my friend, that that is not enough to hit an AC four, and so your arrow uh, just kind of clatters against uh, the back of one of your buddies or like off of the uh, top of the roof, uh, and it doesn't do any good. And now, uh, there I should any... have put the arrow in Mr. Sirius's butt again. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you I knew to do it. Did. I was too excited. <laughs> it is an ancient right. You know that it's an ancient right. Okay, uh, Mr. Sirius, did you want a missile attack or did you want a melee attack? Sword, melee attack. Give me a melee attack. Do you want to hit the one that was hurt or the one that's not hurt? Recommendations? Get the hurt, hurt. one so maybe we can, we can kill him and only one can attack us back. Okay, hurt one. So D20? Yes, sir. Ooh, that's baby. a 20 Whoa. and so here's what i'm going to rule uh you know there aren't really critical hit rules in the old school system but you know when someone rolls a d20 you, uh, and gets a 20 a natural 20 you gotta give them something so i'm gonna say not only do you kill the one don't even bother with damage you kill the one that you're swinging your sword at and now you can roll damage on the other one because your sword goes completely through one of the guys and yes. it's about to hit the other one. That's a D8 with the sword. Five. He's dead. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, Mr. Serious was super proves boss. how the serious he is. He just sliced <laughs> through two orcs with one mighty swing. They lay there, their guts spraying arterial fluids everywhere, like whoa, choking on their own blood. Um, and uh, which and then I wish I whispered to Boopal that sword was in my butt. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yes, uh, you do. You do say that. And then I roll. <laughs> I, I assume you're. Uh, they were not able to get the alarm up in time. That all happened so quickly. So, um, would you? What would you like to do next? Search them. Searching them, indeed, indeed. You're searching them. And so, let me roll. And oh, so they have spears. They have okay. chain mail. Uh, uh, so that's two sets of chain mail. Two spear. Yeah. Uh, four spears. They each carry two spears. I'll roll yeah, up the chain mail. That's uh that's that's worth good money. And let me roll on their treasure table to see what they're carrying. Okay. They are carrying. Okay. You guys are gonna like this. Two thousand copper. <laughs> no, the, these particular orcs, for whatever reason, are each are, are they're more they are more um, or, ornamented, um, and you realize that perhaps they might be 
of a different uh, gender among the orcs so, or a different class among the orcs because they are wearing uh, each eight pieces of jewelry. Eight pieces of jewelry. Now, how expensive is, this, is the jewelry? Well, let me find out. Okay. So, um, as you add it up, you think that there's probably like, you think there's probably like 760 silver worth of jewelry here. It's not like super fine. It's not like the crown jewels or anything, but like they have all this like kind of weird worked, um, bronze and weird worked silver on them. Uh, with like cool orcish runes that look really kind of metal and badass. And like, it's like spiky bracelets and like spiky chokers and spiky uh, nose rings. Stuff that's like very punk and cool. Uh, if with this keeps going, baby's going to level up today, Jared. That is exciting because you will be I'm the baby. first. Yes, I know who baby is. You will be the first thaco tuesday character to level up because all of the thaco tuesday characters have like five hp and they keep dying so <laughs> that's very exciting um so uh because you chose to loot the bodies i do have to make a wandering monster roll um and let's see how that goes for everyone okay yeah okay here we go Holy shit. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, you're fine. Um, it doesn't appear that anything has happened or you don't hear any movement. You don't hear anything moving around. You guys have successfully looted these two orcs and there's 20 minutes left in the show. What do you want to do next? Let's delve deeper, gentlemen. Yeah. We've okay. killed so many. We've come so far. You leave this little guard room and um, you can see on your right is that little hole that you look through to that, that, that back passage. And to your left is the door back out in, you know, out of the cave. And then beyond you um, is the room. You heard a lot of commotion coming from the first time you were in here. And uh, from here, those of you with infravision can already see that there's like a, a big table in there and many chairs. It looks like it's like a, a banquet type area. To your right is a passage that leads deeper into the cave. Probably, I mean, Ar you're a you're a dwarf, right, Boopal? Architecturally, mm -hmm. you know that the passage to your right leads back to that area the guy was spying on people from. So you That's can go searching. either into the banquet area or into that back area where he was spying on people. I we know that there's nobody in the back area because we looked at the hole and killed the guy. So let's go search him, right? Uh, very good. Yeah. Um, and in fact, when you get to that back area, um, you are, are now are in a passage where you can see clearly where he looks through the hole in the wall that makes him look like he's one of the skulls. And you can also see that this passage goes back away into another little guard room where let's see if you're lucky guys. Let's see how lucky you are. There's another orc back there. Just one. Um, that's all just one that you can see from where you're at. You're about 20 feet away from it. And, um, yeah, you're in luck because it, uh, doesn't appear to notice you. It doesn't appear to see you. Um, it's, you can kind of just, you see it very briefly moving around back there, but it hasn't noticed you yet. Uh, let's reload my crossbow while he's reloading. I'm going to, I'm going to shoot. You're going to fire at the guy. I'm going to fire at the guy. Go for it. Okay, I'm rolling. I roll a 18 with a plus one, so that's 19. That's a hit. Roll your damage. D6. Three damage. Three damage. So uh, let's see. I'm going to give this guy a morale check. Ready? Um, you're, you're, you're using a bow and arrow, uh, Doink? A short bow. Okay, a short bow. Okay. Um, he makes his morale check. I don't know what to tell you. So your arrow hits him. He squeals. He turns angrily uh, looking at all of you. And like as he tries to pull it out of his side, he begins to move toward you. And this one is wielding a sword. Yes. Hand axe. Uh, you're going to hand axe him. Okay, go for it. 
15. That's a hit. Roll your damage. That's D6, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Five. Dead. Uh, before he can get this very far down the passage. Strike, <laughs> yeah, you so guys well. are doing really well tonight. Um, this is the best any Thaco team has done. Most of the time you guys run in, get your asses kicked, and go, ah, and run out again. And this time it is the fucking A team. Okay. So uh, that guy's dead, and then there is the body of the guy you killed earlier through the hole in front of you. Would you like? To, what are you going to do? Let's search them and search that other. Search these rooms. Yeah, good idea. Okay, um, great. Um, okay, so um, there is uh, really not much in the room, uh, but I can roll on their treasure. Uh, to see if there's anything interesting in their treasure, okay? I can roll on their treasure type. Let's see. Um, the room is just another guard room. So there's a guard room when you first come in, and then there's a guard room back behind this little sentry this location. This is a cave of guard rooms. What it's are they just, guarding? There's exactly. so many so many guard rooms. Um, okay. so They're um, guarding all their copper. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, right. Um, yeah, I think that uh, what you find is a uh, an another bunch of copper pieces, my friends. <laughs> yes. This so is many. um, this time it's 5,000 copper pieces. You're so heavy, Jared. <laughs> I know it's getting heavy. Who's carrying all this? Why are the orcs so poor? I, I know it's any. almost like you're punching down, isn't it? Um, <laughs> oh no, that's not true because Mr. Series has no money at all except for what he has <laughs> stolen from works. So uh, you know he's in he's he's in the he's in the right here. He's in the right. Um, so five thousand copper needs to be in a chest or a barrel of something, right? I assume it's not a hole full of coppers. I told uh, you they they carry big, bulky bags on their hip. Yeah. Now. So, uh, yeah, well, let's drag this back to the mouth of the cave and then see if we don't find anything better before we go home. How's that sound? Deal. Okay. Good. Uh, I'll drop this the 6,000 copper and two chain rails at the door of the cave or kind of hidden around the bend of the cave so that a, a wanderer can't grab them. Okay, um, you, you get them back out of the cave, you kind of put them like in a place where they're sort of hidden and they're not going to like go rolling down the slope and then uh, you can go back in. Let's do it. Okay, um, so um, uh, the only area left in this kind of first area of the cave that you haven't looked at yet is that banquet area that I mentioned before. Are you heading? Go, go, because that's in Goonies. That's yeah. always where we're going to find tons of gold. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. There is a great fireplace on the south wall and many tables and benches in this 30 foot by 50 foot chamber. Uh, the table at the north end has a large chair at its head. Um, looks like a place of honor of some sort. Uh, and there is no, I mean, I would have told you, but there are no orcs in sight right now. I can tell you that once you're in this area, you see to your right, there is a, a passage that slopes upward, higher up into the hills. Or you can kind of continue forward. There are directly ahead of you, there are two passageways heading into a back room. Um, well, if nothing turns up in a search, including secret doors, then... Can Which I take you guys a, want to go? Can I take a listen? That's a good idea. Go for it. Okay. I am taking a big old listen. <laughs> and I roll it. Ooh, a six. That is a success. And so the keen elf ears of Doink hear that um, the sloping passage, you don't hear anything. Whatever's up there is far, far away. You'd have to go up there and take a look. But uh, beyond this room, there's one big, large room you can tell because you can hear that the sounds that emanating from the two passages are kind of the same. And you can hear a lot of orcs kind of quietly grunting and snuffling hmm. back there. Question. So you said there's, are there any like little 
fire sconces in here. Yes, there are. There's a fireplace, and there are a couple like little fire sconces to place torches. But currently, it's pretty dark. I'm going to say. Actually, this is a good point, Mister Series. It's pretty dark in here for you, unless you light some fire. I got a torch. Very good. Well, well don't um, light it right now. Don't no. don't quite give us away. Like, oh, okay. Give us away to the. But I, I've got my my night vision. Okay, great. So you're gonna you'll tell me. Is is there maybe now, Jared? If there's torches, torches usually get soaked in like oil. Do I see any like oil barrels around or anything? Um, I'm afraid there's no oil barrels. There are a few like kind of just barely glowing uh, coals in that fire. Right. That's why it's so dark in here. It's not providing a lot of heat or light anymore. It looks like it's kind of burnt down. Um, it is, um, uh, if anybody would like to roll their intelligence, that would mean rolling a D20 under their intelligence, they may do so. Give I got shot. seven. I rolled an 18 on a D20. It's not going to do it, is it? No, oh, I it's right. Roll under. It. Yeah. Okay, nobody, no, know, nobody knows what, uh, what, what the significance of the fire burning down is. But suffice to say, there are many orcs in that chamber beyond this banquet area. I think it's orc bedtime. Uh, Does that mean you want to kill them? I don't or know. they go to bed? I kind of lean towards, uh, let's take the quiet passage. Just let these guys fuck around by themselves, right? I think we've been pretty aggressive. We, 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 we've earned a passive choice. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, um, you, um, head up, are you heading up the slope? Yeah. Yeah. You head up the slope. Um, and when you get to the top of the slope, you see that once again, you have a fork, you can go to the left or you can go to the right. The right immediately ends in a door. Um, this door, uh, looks to be heavy and wooden, uh, worked in kind of a way that humans and elves and dwarves don't work things. It has a different carving tool was used, uh, and there are uh, metal clamps on it that are of a design and work that you are not used to seeing. Uh, let's search that door for traps. Okay, great. What's, How are you going to do the other? What's down the other passage? The other passage, um, you can't quite tell because it goes about. Oh, 40 feet ahead, and then it turns to the right suddenly. Yeah. Yeah, check the door for traps. Yeah, uh, I'm going to use my detect non magical traps. Two Great. and six. But I rolled a one. So, no traps here, and then I'll open the door. Um, you, try I... to open, you try to open the door, and just as you do that, you realize it's locked. Duh! You could, uh, it is made of wood. It, it, you would be able to chop it open if you wanted to, but it would require, you know, uh, some work and some noise would be uh, created. Can I try and pick the lock? Um, I, I'll allow it, but because you are not a thief and you don't have that as a skill, then I'm going to say, oh, geez, how do I, how do I uh, rule this? Picking a lock is not a thief. Um, do you have a D20? Uh, yeah, I have a D20. If you roll and you get a 20, you've picked it. Okay. 5% chance. 17. Afraid not, my friend. You, uh, you sit there. So Doink has now filled the lock with, what are you using, Doink? Um, an arrowhead. Okay. Doink is like, um, you break off an arrow in the lock. Uh, there is literally a skill, uh, to force open doors. And I believe Mr. Sirius has it two and six to force a door. Yep. Where is that on my thing? It's from your strength skill. Uh, it, you, you see, it's, uh, there's only room on that sheet to write plus one, but fighters can force a let door. Me, oh, let me, let yes. me check. Open doors. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, melee attacks, melee damage, open doors. It's a plus one, it says. So what do I do? Plus I one. think it's actually two and six for you. Uh, two and six? 
Um, uh, that sounds that sounds good. So you can roll a d6, and if you get a five or a six, you've forced open this door. All right, let's see. Two. I'm afraid not. Mr. Serious, boom, bangs against it. Ouch. And now everybody's kind of taken a turn, so I'm going to roll for Wandering Monsters. I'd like the door to roll. <laughs> Holy shit, I can't believe it. Okay. It's the unicorn um, again. It's not the unicorn at all. What it is is, um, let's see. We should roll for surprise, everybody, um, because something is just kind of walking down the passage all of a sudden. So that means you roll a d6 and I roll a d6. Go for it, Nate. Okay, d6, here we go. Four. Um, four and it, you're not surprised, but it is surprised. Uh, it is quite surprised to see you there. So it's coming from that other passage that you guys hadn't investigated yet. Um, it is an orc, uh, in chain mail, uh, carrying a shield and a mace. Um, it, uh, looks big and mean and has a little weird crown on its head. Uh, and the it's very, it's very surprised to see you when it comes down this passage. It's like shocked to see you. That means that you guys all get a free attack because <laughs> it's surprised and you're not. Melee. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. So uh, one one free, uh, let's go one free turn. You guys can move. So right now, let me tell you how, how far away it is, okay? Um, it is from you guys. This uh, orc chieftain is... Um, it is a hundred feet away from you. What? Wow. That's pretty. Yeah, far. that's what it is. So, um, actually, that's not possible. So, let's say it's all the way back. I told you it was about forty feet to where it turns suddenly right. That's how far it is. It's about forty feet back there um, from you, and it has just come around the corner and it sees you all trying to get into the door, and it's like, ah! uh, and then my um, door, my door. Um, and now you can um, decide whether you guys would like to uh, move. Nope. I'm, I'm nope. Let's stay where I am. But I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot uh, an arrow. Okay, I'll tell you when you can shoot an arrow, Mister Serious. Are you running forward or are you staying back? Oh, you know. Oh, I'll get right up in there. I'll get right. Up, I'm running right at him. I want to be in melee range. <sighs> Okay, great. Um, so here's the thing. He's about 40 feet away, and normally your run in one turn is 30 feet. So you can run, and you'll still be like 10 feet away from him. Do you want to do that anyway? And then you know, like next turn, you can get on top of him and start whacking him? This turn, you could throw your, your yeah, I, I axe at him. Yeah, I think I'll stay him. where I am and throw my axe then. Okay, so everybody's going to stay back and throw their axe. So go ahead and make your missile attacks. Let's start with Mr. Sirius's axe throw. The okay. long range on a hand axe is 30 feet, so you should move up 10 feet. Oh, okay. Great. No problem. You move up 10 feet and you throw your axe. 12. That is not going to quite do it because he's got... Nope, 12 doesn't do it. And so your hand axe is no longer an option for you until you pick it up later. It goes flying down the passage and lands like near his feet. I guess you didn't... Exactly, yeah. Who else is making a ranged missile attack? Me. I think everybody. Doink, go for it, buddy. Okay, I roll a six, but I have a plus one. So that's a seven. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, really exciting, but I'm afraid not. Uh, your arrow, go. you shoot it into the locked door behind you. And <laughs> Does the door open? <laughs> the door does not open. Uh, but there are now two arrows sticking out of it from your lockpicking attempt. And now it is Boopel von Borpelsby's turn. 14 plus one, 15. That is a hit. Oh. All right. Five. Five. Uh, five uh, damage. Okay, really good. Um, okay, this is exciting. So uh, that's your turn, because you guys aren't going to make melee attacks this turn. Uh, and now it's uh, the Orc Chieftain's turn. I'm going to roll his morale to see if he hangs out or hooves it away. He succeeds in his morale check. He thinks he can take you guys. So he comes running down the passage. 
He has only about uh, 30 feet of movement as well. But as we remember, Mr. Sirius moved up 10 feet. Uh, and so when he gets to Mr. Sirius, he pulls his mace and he swings it at Mr. Sirius. Let me see here. Does he have different... Okay, here he goes. I have a shield. That's important. That adds to your AC, which is what? What is your AC? Uh, well, I have armor class seven, but I have leather, which is AC seven, and then shield AC plus one. So you have so a six AC. Okay. Guess what? He still hits. Oh, he rolled close. a 13. He rolled a 13, and here comes his mace damage. Okay, he just rolled six damage on you. Damn, I'm Holy dead. Fuck. Am I Holy dead? Holy shit! And what's your what's your how many HP do you have? Hit points? Yeah, six. Smash the orc chieftain! Smashes Mister Sirius to the ground. Mister Sirius, <laughs> Kurt, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> 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 Your skull is broken open like a ripe melon. <laughs> yes, uh, your brain. You see, Mister Sirius's brain spill out onto the earthen floor of the cave. Your friend of fifteen years. No. Fifteen years. No. Mister Sirius, are you okay? <laughs> Mister Sirius. Oh. <laughs> um, and um, that is the orc chieftain's turn. Oh my god, I can't believe we've lost Mr. Sirius, everybody. Holy shit. Uh, well, it's probably for the best. Kurt's gone. It's, it is 9 o'clock. <laughs> I just, if he is gone, I want to thank Kurt so much for playing with us tonight. Oh, he's there. He's okay. Um, Kurt, uh, honestly, when someone dies at 9 o'clock, they're welcome to do whatever they want. But I want to tell people before we end the whole game that they should listen to Kurt's podcast, Bananas. They should check out uh, Hot Tub whenever they can, which is available online. It's a very, very funny stand-up show that is uh, still running here in L.A. for so long. How long has that been running, Kurt? 16 years, baby. 16 motherfucking years. Uh, and uh, just follow Kurt online and look up all he's doing because he's you, you're going to get back on, on the road soon too, right? Uh, yeah, I'm doing Portland May 13th through 15th at Helium. I think that's the best way to die is like your brain splatter everywhere. And you're like, I'm doing Portland May 13th through 15th. Um, uh, no, I mean, the, uh, yeah. And check out Kurt's specials and everything that he does online. Um, you are welcome to hang out and watch these guys die too, Kurt. Cause that's what's right, happening right, next, right, baby. Right, right. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, we'll go just a little longer. You know, the way we play Thacko Tuesdays is at the end of the night, everybody gets kind of teleported back to the fort. Uh, it, you know, if, if so, we'll figure out very quickly what's happening in this combat, and we'll we'll kind of head back to the fort. But first, you guys have a turn, uh, Nate and uh, Clint. Shooting my arrow. Okay, go for it, buddy. Now I pull out an arrow that I remember was <laughs> was butt touched by my dear friend who has just passed away. Makes it even more special. It go does. Any sort of bonus on that? Um, it's got that song, <laughs> that song from like the one Fast and the Furious movie about it's been a long way <laughs> without you, my friend. That plays as you pull that arrow. All right. That's the bonus. Yeah. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll take it. You, and you I, plus roll, one. I roll a 12 with a plus one. That's 13. To hit this guy doing? who has a shield. He's the York chieftain. It is not enough. Oh, oh all right. if only I had that bonus I asked for. It's not enough because he's a he's an orc chieftain and he's got a shield. Uh, Boopel von Borpelsby, what's your uh, action? And you guys you know need to tell me if you're moving before you start firing. I did not but move, no. Apparently not. Boopel. No one will ever get to level two on this show as long as I'm on it. I charge the orc chieftain. Holy shit. Okay, you've moved close. Are you going to make a melee attack against him? I am. Go for it. 14. That no bonus. is a hit. 
Oh, so Doink was really yeah, close. Doink I almost was... hit him. Yeah, he you just had given that him shield. that fucking one point. Okay. And rolling damage seven. Whoa. Dude, this guy is still alive. Fuck. But, uh, yeah, he's the chieftain. <laughs> uh, what kind of d- weapon do you use? Sword. You uh, you stick your sword into him, and he kind of like pushes himself farther on, and is like, and you can <laughs> smell what he ate that night, and it's kind of like overpowering, and your hair gets blown back, and he's still alive, and it's his turn. Oh, and no. I'm going to make a morale roll for someone who has three HP left to see what they do. He makes his morale roll. This guy's in it. Um, he it brings it. his weapon. Uh, even though you have your sword all the way in his gut, he swings his mace again, and he rolls a 19. That'll do it. Yep. He hits you, and he does three. Count it. Three damage, Clint. All right, I can take that. Smashes against the side of uh, our, our the dwarf Boople's armor. Maybe the, the dwarf isn't quite tall enough to be easy to hit. Like, he's just kind of hitting you in the helmet or, like, kind of <laughs> smashing against your shoulder because the dwarf isn't quite high enough. And now we come to a new turn. Does anybody want to uh, move? Okay. Um, we're staying where we're at? I'm, I'm actually... Yeah. No, yeah, I'm going to stay where I am. You can kill this guy. We can do this. Okay. All right, here we go. This I'm, is it. You can do this. I'm Come rolling. on. Doink. Come Roll on. your missile attack. 16 you your... with a plus one. That's 17. Ooh, that's a hit, baby. Do your damage. And now watch you roll one damage. Roll one damage. <laughs> I rolled one damage. You did. <laughs> <laughs> An arrow pierces the side of the orc. Ah! <laughs> He's still alive. The fires of so many villages he's burnt to the ground shine in his eyes. Uh, this is a relentless and indomitable foe. Boopel von Borpelsby, would you like to make a melee attack? Yep. Let's go this for is, it, buddy. This is a very important melee attack. Thirteen, which I know misses. It misses because he has the shield. Did yeah, you count he your, has the shield. Oh, wait, never mind. Did you count your plus one for? Well, wait, you don't have a that's plus for, one. That's for no. ranged. Yeah, it's for Actually, ranged. I, I take it back. Bupal does have. A, he has a fourteen strength. He does get a plus one. Fourteen. What? <laughs> I have haven't been using strength. No, I didn't. I didn't count it. That's are you? You're not fucking with me. Don't fucking not, shit me right I'm not, now, Clint. I'm not fucking with you. I'm not fucking with you. I only have a 10 dex, so my plus one for dex has always been for range. Okay, because you know strength. we do this scientifically, and we 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 s- torture ourselves over every point, so you're sure this is accurate. It's uh, Jared, it's so important that I have a 14, because I was kind of hurt when you didn't ask what Boopa looked like with his shirt off, because <gasps> I knew it was probably pretty tight. <laughs> I'm sorry for not asking, but now I can tell you that as this all happens, the orc has somehow ripped off Boopal's shirt. (laughs) In this melee, in this melee, the mace has somehow knocked off Boopal's short shirt. And I can tell you something, Goink, you're looking at him and the sweat, it's the best. Just you ever see like a nice back? Oh, it's firelight. Oh, it's yeah. So, like, it's like a vase. It's like a Ming vase. And now you do your damage, Boople von Borplesby. Eight. The e- orc chieftain goes down under a Boople's weapon. Uh, he eventually just kind of goes stiff on the end of your sword and you pull it out, you know, yank it out by kicking him off of it. Uh, blood and, and viscera kind of spill out of his gut and he sits there getting gray and cold at your feet. Um, he probably has a I better... lean over and I say, this is for Tim Sirius. And I kiss him <laughs> on the lips. <laughs> he had a first name. I lean over realize. and I say, how'd you like that one damage I did, bitch? <laughs> 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 well, it did have it did have a uh, 
It did have an effect. Okay, so. Retcon, um, this is for Yahoo Serious. We're at the very okay. end. We're at the very end of tonight's. So I'm going to kind of epilogue this. We've, we've played for two hours, six minutes. Here's what happens. I'm going to give you the treasure that he has on him. And then um, you can go back uh, into the passage he came from and look around a little bit. How does that sound? Love it. Great. But we'll do, we're going to do it quickly. We're going to do it quickly and finish finish the eve. Okay, so. The, uh, when you go, do you let's go? Let's let's handle uh, what he had on him. And uh, boy, this is going to be good. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and decide he has a better treasure type than those other guys. Yeah, I'm being really nice. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, okay, here we go. He's going to have. Oh, okay, interesting. Okay, so just on him, he has, he has, um, his 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 weapons and his armor. I told you about in that shield are like really like that. He won them off of some great warrior long ago. They are worth five thousand silver pieces. Whoa! Yeah, they're they're big time, big time, interesting stuff. Um, let me know when you're ready to explore that final chamber. Uh, now. Okay, Unless Doink has something you'd like to do. Uh, no. Um, so remember, those are weapons and like his armor and like his little his little crown and everything. They belonged probably to some some ancient warrior of the Duna Day, the first tribes, and so they are they belong beautiful in a museum. pieces. They be it belongs in a museum. Uh, and then you head back to his uh, his room. Um, and, uh, oh, uh, you see that, um, okay. Oh, there's more on him. I'm sorry. I, I messed up. He has 31 gold pieces on him and a ring with a gem worth 700 gold pieces. Whoa. When you come Whoa. in, you see that the room is carpeted and has tapestries on the walls, uh, and a battered, but serviceable furniture. And, uh, look, this is kind of problematic, but there are two mates in the room. It says, this was written in 1981. Uh, sure, there sure. are two. You know what? Let's go ahead and be progressive. It's it's 2021. He has you know a male and a female mate in there with him, right? He's this yeah. uh, orc chieftain. He's a fluid guy, and um, they are uh, they are civilian orcs, so they do not like rise to fight you. But let's see what their reaction to you is. Oh, they actually are indifferent to you. So they're just like, take the money. Oh. They're saying this in Orcish. Take whatever you need. They're super high. Yeah, like, let's not. Yeah, they there's actually a good point. There's incense burning, and they're all like, Whoa, I can't, what's going on? Um, and uh you um you can look around if you'd like. I would like. Okay, what are you searching for? Uh, I'm searching for uh using my detect. My dwarven senses uh, to look for construction tricks and traps. Okay. For hidden G items. Give me a roll. <clears throat> Five, which I think mm -hmm. in two and six. Uh, that's incredible. And this is where we're going to end tonight. Boopal pulls down one of the tapestries and there's a hidden door behind it. You found a secret door, Boopal. And you also get... Uh, these orcs are like giving you what's on them. They have seven and six uh, gold pieces on them. That's 13 more gold pieces. Please add that to your sheet. And that is the end of tonight's session of as, Thaco Tuesdays. As a final act. What? Oh, yeah, a, final act. Yes. As a final act, I'd like to take out the map, which mm -hmm. had a unlabeled cave that we have just looked into. And I... Yep. You know, we see caves have orcs and goblins, and I write on this one, 10-foot pole guy's mama. <laughs> okay, that's going to literally that's go on. We're going right to literally write that here. there. Is that <laughs> sure what you want to – you're sure that's what you want to go with? Yep. Okay, so from now on, that cave will be referred to as 10-foot pole guy's mama. I want to thank <laughs> – my players who were amazing tonight, Clinton Trucks, as always, uh, a stalwart, a stalwart comrade, Nate Fernald. Nate, where can people see your stuff or look at your stuff? Uh, find me on Twitter, I suppose, at Nate Fernald. 
Great. Uh, and uh, look for him here because we want to have all these guys back. And Kurt, as I said, the Bananas podcast and lots of other stuff. Guys, thank you so much. This was fun tonight. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I'm going to uh, say goodbye Kurt, to my friends. What? Yeah. Dying does not preclude you returning. I have died many times in an hour. So don't worry. <laughs> all right. Uh, good night to my friends here. And I'm going to hang out for a second and just go through what, what we have coming up and uh, say a couple show notes. Thanks. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Thanks, guys. Au revoir. I'm back. I brought you back because I like for you to help me. And also, I don't have my show notes open. What should we tell them? I kind of <laughs> told them at the beginning, at Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific, they can watch you and I talk about campaign promises. Uh, that's our yeah. chat show where we talk about role-playing games and uh, all things nerdy, right? And uh, they get to give us live questions and comments, and they've been great. Uh, they have been really so. great. Hashtag eat booty. Um, you can listen to us on the stereo app. That's a free app to download. Um, download that app. And at 4 PM Pacific, you can search. Uh, what do they search? They search for stream of blood, right? Yeah. Stream of blood or uh, Clint trucks or campaign promises. Any of those will bring it up. That's right. Um, Blades in the dark is happening on Saturday, this coming Saturday at, I believe 6 PM Pacific. 6 PM. Uh, Yep, and that is uh, with the Tin Whistles, our original uh, and most ambitious crew. And boy, are they in a tight spot. And I can only tip a little bit of a uh, hint of what's coming up, tease a little bit. Uh, you're going to see some new characters this time. Some new players. This is, this is tighter than they even know, because this is our first session after our faction turn. And uh, Yes. So much world is going has, on. The world has continued to turn, even when the players are not around. Yep, Bear has made some moves. Uh, the Foghounds are, have made some moves. Uh, and we'll see how it affects uh, Joe O'Brien, Troy LaValle, and our very own Ross Bryant when we when we play that. Um, and then Sunday, we're back for some more Vampires of Pittsburgh lockdown. Uh, what a rewarding chronicle this has been. You, If you ever told me that you're going to get to – Jared, you're going to get to do 50-plus episodes – of a vampire chronicle. And it's going to be one of your favorite campaigns you've ever run. Sure. I would have said, sir, you are a liar. Now get out of my house. I dare say having as somebody who's played a lot of vampire and white wolf games, I've never played a really great one. Even ones I've been in before. This is a legitimately great version of this game. If you like the white wolf and vampire, the masquerade setting, this is a plus come, come check out what we're up to. Thank you, Clint. 10 a.m. on Sunday is when that's happening. Guys, uh, If I might be preaching to the choir, but if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Subscribing to our stream is how we make money. We don't have a Patreon right now or any uh, other way that we take in profits. So your subscriptions mean a lot to us, and your subscriptions entitle you to things like our Blades in the Dark faction turn, where you get to help control one of the gangs of Duskfall, or our upcoming Vampire the Masquerade Philadelphia creation session, where myself and the subscribers and Mr. Clinton Trucks are going to create the factions among the vampires of Philadelphia. So that's coming up uh, pretty soon on uh, April 1st, I believe. Um, anything else? Should we say uh, arrivederci? No, not quite. Uh, did you, we mentioned the stream of blood is a podcast. Oh, uh, we didn't mention great that. Place Go ahead. To, it's a great place to catch up on the vampires of Pittsburgh uh, storyline. And uh, we are about to end Chronicle one uh, of vampires of Pittsburgh in podcast time. So go and either uh, listen to it again or uh, catch up for the first time there. And we'll be starting up both lockdown and some of our other shows on the podcast feed quite soon. Uh, we were playing BX style Dungeons and Dragons tonight as presented from old school essentials, classic fantasy from necrotic gnome games. So go check them out. Great book, great product. Uh, I would tell you that original artwork for Thaco Tuesdays is by Will Potter, but that beautiful map you saw was actually drawn by our own Jared Logan. That's right. I'm an artist too. Um, uh, but this are... beautiful uh, minotaur you see was drawn by Will. And yeah. The, the minotaur is Will. 
Um, we are on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and uh, all the socials. Please follow us there for updates and, uh, you know, when we're doing extra games and special events like the Philadelphia Creation Session. Uh, and please also check out our Discord. That's the best, best place to come and talk with us about what you'd like to see, what you think of the shows, and to just talk with a bunch of really cool people who uh, love games and sci-fi and horror and fantasy and things like that. Um, so please come to the uh, Stream of Blood uh, server of blood and chat with us. I want to thank, I have thank yous. I want to thank Clinton Trucks. I want to thank our other producer and partner, Brian Baldinger, uh, an oft, oft times, hey, there he is, uh, a player here on the stream. I want to thank, uh, I want to thank, I'm sorry, Megan Arch. Matt Moynihan uh, and Garrett Ross and Andrew Orvidal. Uh, Megan Arch is our social media manager. Matt Moynihan is our YouTube content producer. And I want to thank you guys for watching. This is so much fun to be able to sit down and play games with really cool people every week. And you make that possible. So thank you. Uh, and yesterday was our one year anniversary. So double thank you guys. Uh, we wouldn't have guessed we would get to one year with as much sort of in the can as we've done we've done hundreds of hours of role playing in the last year that i thought in a year when i thought we might do none you know we are so grateful and also surprised that uh we have made it this far and you know i know i say this every time but i really mean it 2021 we have big plans right clint we have a couple big things looming on the horizon very exciting yeah yeah, so we'll announce those as soon as we can, but you'll be uh, just if I say look for new shows or new ways that we team up with some of our, our friends and pals uh, in gaming all over the internet. Uh, but until then, uh, everybody go to sleep and get tucked in and read a scary story uh, and happy gaming, you sons of bitches. Good night. Goodbye forever.